presentation of News 4 Sports. The loss in Lincoln lingers, but the seventh-rated Buffaloes hope not for long because the Nebraska defeat is history. Oklahoma State is now the clear and present danger. How will the Buffs respond after so many dreams vanish beneath the Cornhuskers' crush? We'll find out soon. Okie State's in Boulder. It's homecoming for the Buffs. The kickoff coming up. Sports presents CU Buffaloes football. Live from Folsom Field in Boulder, it's the Oklahoma State University Cowboys versus the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Folsom Field in Boulder. I'm Les Shapiro along with Dave Logan. It is homecoming here for CU, and I bet they're thrilled to be home after that disturbing loss to Nebraska. And Dave, I, the question, I guess, is how well will they respond after that loss? Well, I think that's a question that obviously we'll find out about in the next three hours. And I know that Bill McCartney places a lot of stock in that Nebraska game. And when you go into Lincoln and you play the way that they did in such a disappointing fashion, I think it's really tough to get your team back. They've worked hard this week. McCartney has told his club, hey, we still have a chance for the Big A title and the national championship. They still have a lot of good things in front of them, but I think emotionally they're going to be at a couple of pitches below where they were last week here today. Yeah, there certainly is still a lot to play for. There's a possible spot in the Fiesta Bowl, the Sugar Bowl. They're being talked about greatly. And you also have to hold out hopes for a Heisman Trophy with running back Rashawn Salam. Well, he's having a sensational year. Rashawn Salam is, uh, as you see, leading the country in rushing all-purpose yards and scoring. He's a junior tailback, 218 pounds, combines great strength with excellent speed. And he, I, I think, is, is a legitimate chance to win the Heisman Trophy. Last week against Nebraska, 134 yards rushing. And as you can see, Nebraska not giving up a lot of yards on the ground. So Salam's the real deal. Yeah, he certainly didn't hurt himself and his Heisman chances with that game against Nebraska. Now, when you talk about the Oklahoma State Cowboys, the most potent part of their attack, the running game with David Thompson and Andre Richardson. Well, they like to run the football because they don't throw it very well. And they've got two very capable young backs. Andre Richardson is a true sophomore, and everybody wanted Richardson. They thought he was going to Tennessee. USC was in on him. Uh, Oklahoma, but Richardson decided to go to Stillwater. He is the game breaker for the Cowboys. Oklahoma State comes in here with a 3-4-1 and one record. There's David Thompson right there, their leading rusher. Back to Oklahoma State now, a 3-4-1 and one record, still looking for their first win in the Big 8 Conference. The Buffs are 7-1 and 3-1 and three and one in conference. We'll be right back with the kickoff. CU Buffs football on News 4 is brought to you by Pizza Hut, by Miller Genuine Draft, by your Denver Front Range Dodge dealers, by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado, by Midas, by Ankmar Door, and by First Federal Bank. Hey, football fans, it's the video coupon. Call Pizza Hut now during the Wade Phillips Show and order your Meat Lover's Pizza. A medium Meat Lover's Pizza loaded with six delicious meat toppings, only $8.99. And a second medium pizza, just five bucks. Call now during Wade, because when it's over, so is this offer. who've discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. It had to be you. It invented the standards for how a minivan should ride and drive. It exceeds 1998 car safety standards. It gives you more choices than any other minivan. Dodge Caravan, the best-selling minivan of all time. Millions of people wouldn't know what to do without it, but they sure know what to do with it. It had to be you. I wonder who you. It had to be you. 
I buy my own health insurance. It's my money from my own pocket. I don't want to spend more than I have to. Call 1-800-362-BLUE. I don't get sick. I hardly ever go to the doctor. Why should I spend a lot of money on health insurance? If you're in good health, we can save you money on health insurance. Call Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado. 1-800-362-BLUE. We're expecting another capacity crowd at Folsom Field. Should be 50, 52,000 strong, depending how many we can squeeze in, standing room only. And it's another gorgeous day in Boulder, so everybody ought to be showing up. The weather statistics, temperature 52 degrees, humidity pretty low at 10%, and hardly any wind to speak of. The series between these two teams has been a competitive one. The Buffs leading it, 20 wins, 15 losses, and one tie. However, CU has dominated the past five years with wins against Oklahoma State. Last year, CU beat the Cowboys 31-14. Cordell Stewart, a pretty nice outing, throwing three touchdown passes. And now let's go down to the field. Mark McIntosh will be with us all day long, giving us updates from the turf. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You've talked about Cordell Stewart, and I don't think there's anybody on the CU football team looking forward to this ball game any more than Cordell Stewart. Once again, a tough outing against Nebraska last week, but Cordell Stewart still comes into the ball game, leading the Big 8 in total offense, more than 243 yards of ball game. But I talked to Cordell earlier this week, and he says he is bound and determined to come out here and play well and lead the Buffs to a blowout. They literally want to blow the Cowboys off the field. Unfortunately, it looks like Oklahoma State might suffer the punishment of the Buffs' frustration after what happened last weekend in Lincoln. And I think Cordell Stewart, although he hasn't really verbalized it very much, feels very responsible for that loss last week in Lincoln. He feels he didn't make some real good decisions during the offensive series the Buffs had, and he wants to come out today and play very well. One guy he is not going to have to throw to this afternoon will be his senior All-American candidate, Michael Westbrook. He is bothered by a foot sprain. He is very doubtful for the ball game. The CU trainers tell me that in just in case, or if the only way he's going to play is if this ball game is close and the Buffs absolutely need him. He's bothered by the foot sprain. It's actually been bothering him for about three weeks. He aggravated it last week against Nebraska. So don't look for Michael Westbrook to play in the ball game. Everybody else uh, pretty much healthy down here. Look for Cordell Stewart to have a big ball game. Last back up to you. Thanks, Mark. And if Michael Westbrook does not play, the word from the sideline is Phil Savoy, the freshman redshirt out of Washington, D.C., will start in his place. Here comes Bill McCartney leading his 7-1 buffs out onto the field right behind Ralphie, the mascot. did not make the trip to Lincoln last week. And that might be one reason why the Buffs were down on their luck. They're going to have to bring him uh, up to the Northeast next time around. Huh? Yeah, I think there's some sort of stipulation, however, that uh, Nebraska did not want Ralphie on the field. So I don't know that uh, she'll be able to make that trek to the lovely city of Lincoln. Well, you're looking at the coin toss right now. Your officials for today's game, the referee is Terry Turlington, who we see quite often. The others will be Bob Holiday, Jim Jankowski, Steve Stelgis, David Warden, Phil Laurie, and Mike Ward. And the indication from Terry Turlington is Oklahoma State will receive the opening kickoff. Handshakes all around, and David, uh, our audience at home might have noticed that right before the coin toss, they honored the team from 1975, the 75 Buffs, and uh, I expected you to be down there on the turf with them. Yeah, that, uh, it was nice to see a lot of uh, a lot of the former teammates, a lot of good guys, guys still live in this area, a few even from uh, from <laughs> around the country. Oh, my, nice mutton chops there. Is that you, Les, to the right? Uh, you know, I don't know where they got that picture, but I think it is me. <laughs> I, I do like your sideburns, oh, however. Oh, my, <laughs> a long time ago. Good team, though, 9-2, and two, played the Blue Bonnet Bowl against Earl Campbell and the University of Texas. A lot of good memories from that team. I'll bet that was one of those days where you were glad to be an offensive player, not having to wrap those arms around Earl Campbell, huh? Yeah, that uh, not only was he a, a great player, but you talk about a guy that uh, just a great guy off the field, too. Earl Campbell, all pro on and off. 
But yes, I'm glad I didn't have to tackle it. The Oklahoma State Cowboys bring some fans along with them to Boulder. As we said in the open, it's been a struggling program for the last few years. Since 1988, they have not had a winning season. From 1989 to 1991, they were on probation, three-year NCAA probation, and they're still trying to recover from that. Well, the last couple of years, actually the last two years, they've been off sanctions, but anytime you put a, a football program, a Division I-A football program on probation, it really just takes the heart from the program. You lose recruiting possibilities. Uh, Pat Jones has had to battle his way through that. And I think really has done a, a fairly good job. Has been able to, as you take a look at some of the, the marks of, of recent years, has been able to win a few games. And again, you look back to that 10-2 and two mark, Barry Sanders' final year. After that time, when probation hit, it has been rough sledding in Stillwater. Pat Jones turned 47 years old yesterday. So he celebrated his 47th birthday in a hotel room in Boulder. And I'll bet I know what he'd like for his birthday. The first conference win of the year for Oklahoma State. The best they've done this year in conference, a tie with Iowa State. Despite the struggles recently, Pat Jones still above 500 in his 11th year at Oklahoma State, helped by three years of 10 wins. We're getting ready for kickoff. It's Neil Voskaritschian doing the honors for the Buffs, and back to receive will be Raphael Denson and Andre Richardson. Jeroy Johnson, also back for Oklahoma State. They have three men lined up at the goal line waiting for Voskaritschian's kick, and here it is. This is Denson, taking it about eight yards deep in the end zone, does the prudent thing, decides not to run it out. So Oklahoma State, led by quarterback Tony Jones, will start with the ball at their own 20-yard line. Here's the starting offensive lineup for the Cowboys. Jones at quarterback. The running backs are Jefferson and Thompson. The tight end is Derek Jones. The receivers, Varian and Denson. Denson is a dangerous one, a deep threat. The offensive line anchored by Brian Hope in the middle. He is your center. And here's Tony Jones, a sophomore out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he'll come out throwing. That's complete, and across the 35-yard line goes Russell Berrien. Chris Hudson and Dalton Simmons run him out. For Russell Berrien, that is his first catch of the season. Defense for the CU Buffs, Shannon Clavel, Kerry Hicks, and Darius Holland will try to regroup after being embarrassed by Nebraska last week. And the linebackers led by Matt Russell and Ted Johnson. The defensive backfield, Hudson, the Jim Thorpe cannon, Simmons, the immediate T.J. Cunningham. So Oklahoma State with a first down on its first play of the game. Now lined up at their own 37. This time they run it. And Shannon Clavell makes sure that David Thompson does not run it too far. But Colorado defensively is, is very good up front, and they were the first to admit that they did not play as well as they had to last week in Lincoln. So I think the best thing now for them in terms of how they approach this game is to play a team like Oklahoma State that likes to run the football and really just likes to line up and try to overpower you. That's Colorado's game up front. Tony Jones on the year not doing very well as far as completion percentage, just under 44%. Right now it's second and nine. He stays short, and it's complete to Tim McNeil. McNeil gets across the 50-yard line, run out at the CU 49 by Dalton Simmons. And another first down for Oklahoma State. Well, Oklahoma State's top three wide receivers are converted running backs, and McNeil is a big guy. See, a lot of cushion early in this game. And when you don't have a prolific kind of passing game, you want to get involved in a lot of high-percentage throws. And so far today... The two completions by Oklahoma State, very short pass routes. First down for Oklahoma State. This is Thompson. Hit hard. Maybe one yard. Carey hits the stop. And a little pushing and shoving going on down on the field. Both of these teams come in here very frustrated. CU coming off the loss to Nebraska, Oklahoma State. Still looking for that first conference win. 
But the defense has something to prove today and for the remainder of the season. And that's their mission. Second and eight, Oklahoma State in the I formation. Jones on the play action. That pass complete to McNeil. And he is very close to the first down. Inside the CU 40-yard line. And again, take a look. This time Dalton Simmons up in a little bit of bump and run, but really is three deep coverage. Just backs off, and McNeil able to go down, turn around, and make a nice adjustment on the football. Tim McNeil is a guy that a lot of people wanted last year. Came into the game with only two catches. But a very, very good athlete. Actually, the two catches in this game, his first two of the season. High hurdler in high school, very quick. We'll get a measurement, and Oklahoma State has it with some room to spare. So a first down at the CU 38-yard line. Oklahoma State coming right out of the chute, moving the ball on the bus. Oklahoma State coming off a loss to Kansas last week, 24 to 14, and of course, that CU score, the loss in Lincoln, 24 to 7 to the Huskers. The pitch to Thompson. He's got a hole in the middle, and he's inside the 35. Call it a gain of five. Ted Johnson, the stop. That'll bring up second and five. Well, Thompson are the two leading backs, a little bit bigger than Richardson. He's about 200 pounds, very, very quick, and gets a nice cut. Clavel gets upfield, and Thompson able to slice back to the soft spot. Averaging, as you see, about four and a half yards per carry, almost 700 yards on the season. And Thompson, just a sophomore. Andre Richardson, their other fine back, just a freshman, so they'll be around a few more years. This is Thompson again. He's about a yard short of the first down. It'll bring up third and one. Once again, Ted Johnson makes the tackle. We talked about the emotional level of these two teams. When you're in search of your first conference victory, but you really come out fired up and you want to take it to your opponent. On the other hand, when you're Colorado coming off that disappointing loss last week and you face a team that hasn't won a conference game, you just can't sustain that kind of emotional level. And I think Colorado's going to have to work themselves into this game here this afternoon. Well, they better work fast because Oklahoma State is moving the ball. Right now, they're at third and one on the CU 29-yard line. First drive of the game. Thompson leaps over the middle. He has the first down. It's a little like Walter Payton going over the top there. Matt Russell, the linebacker for CU, met him head on, but not soon enough. Well, the key to the jump like this is the jump line needs to be pushed forward. The offensive line here, with a decent surge, at least they get black jerseys down on the ground that allows that runner, in this case, David Thompson, to go up and over. Thompson is averaging 87 yards a game. He's small, but he's compact. 5'8", 200 pounds. And a first down for Oklahoma State at the Buffs 27. This is Andre Richardson. He has a seam tripped up inside the 20 and I'll tell you Dave if he wasn't tripped up by Ted Johnson he might have been in the end zone now they use the short motion by the fullback trying to first outflank Colorado to the right bring that fullback back and you're right if Ted Johnson doesn't make this tackle this is going to be the Cowboy touchdown right now Oklahoma State is doing a nice job up front backs are running hard and they don't look like a team that has yet to win one in conference play. That's a kid that the CU is very interested in, weren't they? Bill McCartney really likes Andre Richardson. And the University of Tennessee did, and about five or six other Division I football powers, he chose to go to Stillwater. He picked up seven yards on that last play, so it's second and three, and this is Richardson again. First down yardage, and inside the CU 15. Shannon Clavel, the stop. See, I think Bill McCartney's biggest fear in this game was not Oklahoma State, but was his team and the mental condition of his team. And right now, you're seeing a fired-up Cowboy team playing a Colorado team that is yet to emotionally get in this game. Very flat and very slow coming off the football. Oklahoma State knocking at the door at the 13-yard line of CU. Another first down. <laughs> Stop. 
Staying on the ground, Richardson inside the 10. I'm a little surprised he didn't turn it outside. Well, keep in mind, Andre Richardson last year was a running back in high school, and I always marvel at these true freshmen and how they can step in and make the adjustment. You can see the nice kick out by the fullback. And by the time Andre Richardson meets Ted Johnson, they picked up about three or four yards. Yes, call it a gain of four. This is what Oklahoma State likes to do. They're basically a running team. They'll throw the ball 12 to 15 times a game, but they want to power in football. Second and six, down to the Buffs' nine-yard line. David Thompson inside the five, down to the four. About a yard short of the first down. Darius Holland to tackle. David Thompson out of Okmulgee, Oklahoma. I was hoping he'd get some work just so I could say Okmulgee. Kerry Hicks comes out of the game on the defensive line for CU with a slight ankle twist, so that man, Vili Maumau, in the game now at the nose tackle position. Third and one for the Cowboys. Thompson has the first down, stopped short of the goal line, however, and there's a flag down. He got it down to the two-yard line, but let's see if Oklahoma State gets pushed back here. Legal procedure may have been somebody lined up too far in the backfield because I didn't see anybody move. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. That's a killer because Oklahoma State did have enough yardage for the first down. And again, that man, Bill McCartney, has to be a bit concerned with what he's seen early. His worst fears realized, at least in this opening drive. You can see the wheels turning in that head right now. Well, you can talk to your kids all you want to about national championship and big A championship, but they were absolutely so discouraged with what happened in Nebraska. Tough to get back. Third and six at the Buffs' nine-yard line. Thompson. He's inside the 10, still well short of the first down, and that'll bring up fourth down. Matt Russell ran him out. And a better job that time by the Colorado defense stringing things out. Greg Jones did a nice job fighting off the block at the line of scrimmage and forcing Thompson to, to bend that back a little bit further. Oklahoma State brings the field goal unit out onto the field. Lawson Vaughn, so far on the year, 8 for 13. And kicking right now, from 24 yards out. And it is true. And Oklahoma State on the opening drive of the ball game takes a three to nothing lead over CU. We'll take a break, come right back, and Oklahoma State will kick it off. Thinking about getting a pizza? Yeah. But hey, don't get up. Call Pizza Hut. We deliver everything you crave. Irresistible Pizza Hut pizza. Loaded with any of our mouth-watering toppings. Your favorite garden vegetables or perfect pieces of pepperoni. All dripping with our hot, delicious cheese. We've got the pizza you want the way you want it. Delivered right to your door. And now, for the ultimate delivery, get a medium meat lover's pizza delivered for just $8.99. Any second medium pizza is just 5 bucks. Call Pizza Hut Delivery today. Why would the Rocky Mountain News call Amendment 11 lousy public policy? They read between the lines of deliberately vague language allowing unscrupulous lawyers to make millions suing businesses without helping injured workers. Vague enough that herbalists, psychic healers, and outright fakes can rip off the system and all locked into our Constitution. 11 risks new opportunities for fraud, says the Denver Post. Newspapers statewide agree. No on 11. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. 
and the expertise of doing over two million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan back with you at Boulder, where Oklahoma State came right out, marched downfield, kicked the field goal, and took a 3 to nothing lead over the Buffs. Getting set to kick off for Oklahoma State is Lawson Vaughn, the man who just converted the 24-yard field goal. Back to receive for the Buffs, Herschel Troutman and James Kidd. This is Troutman from the goal line. Has a seam. And Troutman is tripped up and finally down at the 35-yard line. Let's line up that CU offense for you now. Cordell Stewart, the all-time leader in many categories for CU, throwing categories. The running backs are Rashawn Salam, the Heisman Trophy hopeful. The tight ends are Christian Fourier and Desmond Dennis filling in for the injured Matt Lepsis. The wide receivers are Carruth and Phil Savoy filling in for the injured Michael Westbrook. And the offensive line anchored by the left tackle, Tony Birdie, and the center, Brian Stoltenberg. And see who comes out running the ball. This is Salon. He's spun around, but still gets three yards out of it. Tyler Williams on the defensive line makes the stop. Let's take a look at that Oklahoma State defense. Keep your eye on number 58, Javon Langford. He is a ton, one of the better defensive players in the nation. Your linebackers are Harden, Hobbs, and Elliott. Hobbs is hobbled with some nagging injuries. And the defensive backfield is Jones, Johnson, Trent Fisher, and Lewis Adams. A pickup of three for Rashawn Salam on that last play, which brings up second and seven. And again, it's Salam. And he is dropped for a loss. Link Harden doing the dropping. Now Colorado trying to come out and establish Rashawn Salam early. This, the counter tray, he'll step to the right and as the right guard and right tackle pull, try to get in behind him. But you can see Derek West unable to fill outside and pick up the linebacker Harden and so far Colorado bounced back a little bit and Salam having a great year second highest single season total already and he might surpass that here this afternoon a lot of time to go buffs with three games left on the schedule third and 11 Westbrook going outside to Ray Carruth incomplete and that will bring up fourth down so the buffs go three and out the first time they hold the ball down three to nothing to Oklahoma State. We have 6.49 to go in the first quarter. And anybody who says football is not a game of emotion has not watched a lot of football. Right now, Colorado has little emotion at Oklahoma State, feeling very much like they're in this game. Andy Mitchell to punt for CU and back to receive it is Andre Richardson. Richardson averaging 10 yards per return. Mitchell, a low-line drive. Richardson with a return of about five yards. John Knutson makes the tackle. So Oklahoma State will start with the ball at its own 32 after the 40-yard punt by Andy Mitchell. Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. The cold one. For those who've discovered a smooth draft taste. You know, I've been looking for that. The world is a very cool place. So get out of the old and get into the cold. It's the most powerful line of trucks on the planet. A line of trucks built by people who look at things a little differently. From the company that puts an airbag in every single one. A line of trucks that from one end to the other simply refuses to follow the rules. At America's truck stop, the new Dodge. I buy my own health insurance. It's my money from my own pocket, I don't want to spend more than I have to. Call 1-800-362-BLUE. 
I don't get sick. I hardly ever go to the doctor. Why should I spend a lot of money on health insurance? If you're in good health, we can save you money on health insurance. Call Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado. 1-800-362-BLUE. We're in the mid-first quarter, Oklahoma State and Colorado. The Cowboys with a 3 to nothing lead and the ball. Tony Jones lined up under center. Oklahoma State at its own 32. And the give goes to Richardson. There's some room outside, and he is finally wrestled down at the 39-yard line by down now Liam Eady. Let's go down to the field now. Mark McIntosh with an injury update. Thank you, Les. An update on nose tackle Kerry Hicks. You can see him right there in your picture. He has a sprain in the ligament in his left knee. He will not return to the ball game. We initially thought it was an ankle problem, but his knee, a sprain, the ligament in his left knee. Hicks will not return to the ball game. Back up to you guys. Starting nose tackle for the Buffs out for the afternoon. Right now they could use him because Oklahoma State is moving the ball and moving it well on the ground. Second and four. This is Richardson. Thrown down at the line of scrimmage by Darius Holland. Well, the teams that have had any success running the football against Colorado, and there have not been many, have had most of it when they run right at them. Eye formation, isolation, put your fullback on one of the inside linebackers that go straight ahead. When you try to stretch this defense and run to the perimeter, their quickness usually will catch it. Top-ranked Nebraska leading Kansas early in that ball game, three to nothing. Right now, Oklahoma State facing third and four. Jones over the middle, intercepted by Rosga. Where was he throwing that ball? Rosga, with a lot of room on the sideline, gets it down to the 30 of Oklahoma State. My goodness. But Jones tried to dump the ball to the tight end, and it looked like there was some sort of miscommunication. The tight end quickie pass, left side of your screen. The tight end, Derek Jones, hooks up, and it looked like Tony Jones expected him just to continue down the seam. It's almost as if Jones didn't even look before he threw. He just winged it. There was no white jersey within five, six yards of that pass. And Steve Rosga picks up his fourth interception of the year. He now leads the buffs in that category. So CU with the ball at Oklahoma State's 30-yard line. On the option, Stewart the pitch to Salam. Who? He looked like he was slalom skiing inside the 25. Jeroy Johnson the stop. And Colorado's been able to generate some pretty good yardage this year on the option, and Cordell Stewart makes this thing go. Nice job as he hesitates to the last minute, and then Rashawn Salam with the pitch. Looks like he has both feet just go out from underneath him trying to make the break. Whoop. May have been lucky he did get down. Great block at the end by Ray Carruth on Javon Langford. Steve and Phil Maher would have been proud of that stop by Salam. He skis. They usually were standing up, though, when they stopped. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that looked more like me on skis. Cordell Stewart off the mark, the intended receiver, is the freshman redshirt, Phil Savoy. And Mark McIntosh talked about Cordell Stewart wanting to come out and have the best game of, of the season as you take a look at Cordell's season numbers. Right now, to me, it looks like he's trying so hard, he's aiming the football. And he's at his best when he just goes back, sets up nice and big in the pocket, and just throws the ball. Yeah, he really had a rough afternoon in Lincoln last week. 12 of 28 for 150 yards. On third and five, the option again. The last second pitch to Salam. A great athletic move, and Salam picks up the first down. However, there is a penalty flag down. This may be holding on one of the buff wide receivers, I think. What a great pitch by Cordell Stewart. Shades of Darian Hagan there, waiting till the last second while in the grasp of a, of a defender. And it does go against the buffs, so they'll be pushed back. You take a look. What a great pitch by Cordell Stewart. It looks like the thing is going to be blown up. Push Williams gets excellent penetration. Penalty, Cordell on his foul. way down Feet with the pitch. Down. The hold, I think, right there is Blake Anderson. 
number five trying to come back and make a block. Wide receivers are important in the option game, and this is an effort penalty here. You see Anderson in the middle of the back on Johnny Jones, and that's the call. That will bring up third and seven for CU. Closing in on the four-minute mark of the first quarter. Stewart will run, and he has a lot of room to run. Look at that fake into the end zone. Touchdown, CU. Well, over the course of his career, we have seen Cordell Stewart make so many big plays, and this is supposed to be obviously a pass. He pulls it down. The ball fake here happens about 12 yards down the field, and he gets Johnny Jones to jump up in the air. Jones has got to realize in that case that you can't throw the ball once you cross <laughs> the, the uh, line of scrimmage. Oscar Ritchie in the extra point. And CU with a 7-3 lead. We have 3.56 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Watch Manly Men do Manly Deeds in six days to Saturday. Also known as Broncos Beat. This is my show, baby. Electrifying co-hosts Gary Miller and Reggie Rivers square off for another stunning season of Broncos Beat. It's the toughest Broncos show on TV. It's all mental preparation. Who, him? Broncos Beat puts you on the sidelines Saturdays at 6.30 only on News 4. Didn't mean to be too aggressive. After midnight, we're going to let it all hang out. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Craft. After midnight, we're going to check the The cold one. <gasps> For those who've discovered its smooth draft taste, the world is a very cool place. We're going to call it all So get out of the air and get into the cold. Dear car owners, not everyone knows a car's suspension consists of the shocks, struts, steering, and alignment. Another thing not everyone knows, Midas is a suspension expert. So if your car pulls, shims, or bounces, come to Midas for a thorough inspection and a guarantee on shocks and struts for as long as you own your car. That's the Midas way. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of KCNC-TV and the National Broadcasting Company. Any reproduction of this telecast without the expressed written consent of KCNC-TV is prohibited. Voskaritian getting set to kick off after CU goes down and scores. Cordell Stewart with a great play. We'll take a look at right after the kickoff. Three guys back to receive it for Oklahoma State. It's Raphael Denson, Andre Richardson, and Jeroy Johnson. And once again, Boscarichian will not allow the run back. Showing a good strong leg today with no wind in this stadium. But Cordell Stewart on the play action pass drops back and once he looks left, and starts to run right, everything opens up. I mean, every white jersey except Johnny Jones was on the left side of the field, and Stewart easily scampers into the end zone. Seven to three, Buffs lead it. And Oklahoma State with the ball at its own 20. Jones, the quick toss to the receiver, Denson, off his hands and incomplete. Denson is a danger when he does get his hands on the ball. He's got four catches this year that have gone for 50 yards or better. And today for Tony Jones, three for five for 39 yards. You can see Oklahoma State again. It's not their game to get involved in throwing the football 50 times. They average about 131 yards per game passing. So they need to run it to be effective. And on second and 10. The middle goes David Thompson. He's finally brought down by Steve Rosga, but Thompson does pick up the first. 
And again, I think the best way to attack this buff defense is straight ahead. This is just a draw, a lead draw. Fullback goes wide and gets a nice clip block on top on uh, the inside linebacker. And David Thompson able to break to the outside and pick up first down yardage. First down for Okie State at its own 31. A good rush on Jones. Throws it across field. And that's Denson. Flag goes down. And Denson still on his feet. Look at this. He's going to get in. I think there's going to be a clip called, however. But it doesn't take away from the great individual effort of Raphael Denson. We talked about the top three receivers being converted running backs. That's a pretty good example of a guy who knows how to run with the football. Tony Jones is forced out. Both inside linebackers were curled to the left. Russell almost gets there. And Ted Johnson on his way. Tony Jones throws all the way back across the field. Raphael Denson with the catch. The, the clip, I think, will be right there. As Dalton Simmons gets knocked down from behind. But take a look at this effort. Stop and go. Chris Hudson can't back. get him. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, spot of the foul, repeat first down. So a 69-yard play that goes for a touchdown is nullified. Raphael Dinson has four catches this year that have gone for more than 50 yards. He is dangerous after the catch. And the ball comes back to the Oklahoma State 32-yard line. First down, and actually that should read nine yards to go for the first. Tony Jones sees something he doesn't like on the defensive side of the ball, and he calls a timeout. The first taken by either team this afternoon. We have 3.08 to go in the first quarter. CU leading Oklahoma State 7-3. to three. Well, Mac and Mac, we'll give you a full rundown of the CU attack. Yeah, the Buffs head coach joins our Mark McIntosh every Sunday night at 1035 for the Bill McCartney Show. Tomorrow they'll have a full rundown of the highlights from today's game, and they'll talk about next week's road trip to Kansas. That's the Bill McCartney Show, Sunday nights at 1035, right here on News 4. Your home for the CU Buffaloes. In fact, right now let's go down to one of those Macs. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. Uh, kind of shades of University of Missouri. The buffs, the turf's kind of slick from the snow yesterday and the day before, and you might have seen earlier in the ballgame some of the guys slipping. So the buffs have gone to a longer cleat. It's about, they look like golf spikes on the bottom of the shoe, and a lot of them are switching into those shoes on the sidelines right now to hopefully get a little better footing on this slick Folsom Field carpet. Back up to you guys. And we saw evidence of that when Rashawn Salam tried to stop and ended up sliding on both feet upright two yards. I think he might have challenged Tommy Moe for an Olympic gold medal after that run. First and nine, Oklahoma State from its own 32. The pitch to Richardson. And he has a huge hole. Into Buffs territory, down to the CU 35-yard line. Finally catching up with him are Donnell Liamidi and Dalton Simmons. I tell you what, watch again as the cutback is available. Clavel fights upfield. There's the cutback, and both linebackers overrun the play. You've got Ted Johnson and Matt Russell. Instead of sliding and scraping, they are running out of the hole, trying to get to the sweep, and these Cowboy running backs have been able to cut back and find substantial yardage. Pretty good day so far. Six carries, 58 yards for the true freshman. And that last carry went 33. And now Oklahoma State at the Buffs, 35. This is Thompson dancing his way for a couple of yards. Darius Holland to stop. And Dave, if you're getting beat on the ground like that, play after play, and you're sitting on the CU sideline, you're a defensive coach, what do you do? Well, I, I think you just have to remind your players to stay in their run lane. Every player has a designated lane that he is held accountable for. Right now, what you're seeing is the CU defense over-pursuing a lot of the toss action by Oklahoma State. Therefore, the cutback alley is available. Tony Jones, the Oklahoma State quarterback, facing second and nine. And he wants another timeout. It's the 
second timeout taken by Oklahoma State this drive. Into the ballgame for CU now at nose tackle will be Ryan Olson. If you're just joining us, the starting nose tackle, Kerry Hicks, came out of the game with a sprained left knee. He is done for the afternoon. So Ryan Olson, Vili Mamau, and Clint Moore ought to get some work at that position today. Some other scores from around the nation. Kansas State at home, leading Iowa State 7-0. Nebraska now has jumped ahead in the first quarter, 24-3 over Kansas. Kansas, the foe for CU next week. We go to Lawrence with the Buffs. Timeout on the field with two minutes to go in the first quarter. CU leading this game 7-3, trying to rebound from that depressing loss to Nebraska last week. Another score, 25th-ranked BYU leading Northeast Louisiana. Second-ranked Penn State leading Indiana at the half. Penn State number one in one poll, number two in another. And, of course, the Buffs come in, ranked seventh. A drop of sp five spots from last week. Bill McCartney trying to rally the troops. Second and nine for Oklahoma State. Jones does the safe thing and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ryan Olson, the tackle. Ryan Olson with the tackle for Colorado. You know, you've used the word emotion quite a bit. It's something that hasn't been talked about a lot is not only was last week emotional, the whole season has really been emotional. Trying to get up for Wisconsin, Texas, Oklahoma. Nebraska, Michigan, one game after another for these guys. Well, I, I think that's true, but I think it's I think you get guys up for games when you're winning games, but when you lose a big one like last week, it really tests the true character of your team. Third and nine. Jones almost picked off again by Chris Hudson. Check that. Mike Phillips, the linebacker stepped in front of that pass and almost picked it off. And that'll bring up fourth down. Oklahoma State will punt. Greg Ivey will do those chores. Ivey averaging a little better than 43 yards a kick. And Chris Hudson is back to receive it. A nice high kick. Oklahoma State is back there to try and keep it from going into the end zone, but the ball, as it does much of the time, takes a funny bounce. You can never predict where that football is going to go. This time it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Well, let's talk some NFL ball now. The best person to answer all your Broncos questions is the head coach, of course. The only place you'll find him is right here on News 4. Get it straight from Wade Phillips every Monday night. This Monday, we'll analyze the game against the L.A. Rams. Wade will pull out the telestrator and diagram the good and the bad. So join the coach and me for the Wade Phillips Show, Monday nights at 6.30 on News 4. Cordell Stewart complete the Salam. First down yardage across the 35 to the 36. The tackle made by Link Harden. Boy, you talk about what makes a passing game go. How about this protection? Cordell Stewart looks right, looks left, steps up, finally finds Rashawn Salam, who just hooked up about eight yards deep. That's his ninth catch of the year. But when you have protection like that, sooner or later, somebody is going to uh, get open. Excuse me, 18th catch of the year. On first down, the Buffs try the middle. You get about five yards out of it, Salam. Norman Williams makes the stop. Very important because you got it. Then this linebacker here can stay in the rush and we can get somebody to space, all right? Wait, wait, let's see what he's saying. Now, that's a tough one, but we can handle it. See you, defensive coordinator Mike Hankwitz going over the defense with his kids. Right now, the Buffs on offense looking at second and five, and somebody jumped. Ball foul. Ball start on the offense. 
offense. Repeat second down. I think may have got Derek West just a little bit. The right tackle. So that pushes the Buffs back five more yards. It brings up second and ten. We have the clock winding down, and the first quarter has expired. With CU leading seven to three over the Oklahoma State Cowboys. We'll come right back to start the second. Nissan Pathfinder and News 4 present Warren Miller's Vertical Reality. Either the Pathfinder sweepstakes and win the ride of your life. Grand prize winner gets a 1995 Nissan Pathfinder SEV6. First prize winner gets a dream vacation to ski with the stars of Warren Miller's Vertical Reality at Keystone or Breckenridge. Second prize winners get a pair of head skis. Entries in the Denver Post and participating Nissan dealers. Enter by January 3rd, 1995. See entry form for complete rules. Nissan Pathfinder presents Warren Miller's Vertical Reality. Both the new Chase Cash Builder Visa and the Discover Card give you cash back. But only Cash Builder consistently gives you 1% back on purchases, 10% back on interest, is accepted at 11 million places, and has no annual fee. Once you've used Cash Builder, you'll see there's nothing left to discover. Watch your mail for our offer. Chase Manhattan. Profit from the experience. We, we the, the people, people of Colorado. Colorado. With our state constitution, for 118 years, it's kept our democratic ideals and principles and protected our individual rights. So why would we put tobacco taxes and health care spending programs into it? Amendment 1 is a constitutional amendment. It makes health care spending programs and three new tobacco taxes permanent parts of Colorado's constitution. Vote no on Amendment 1, because even if you're for the spending programs and new taxes, they don't belong in our constitution. CU Buffs football on News 4 is brought to you by Coors, by Ride Arrangers, by Kaiser Permanente, by United Airlines, by Blackjack Pizza, and by Samsonite. Well, these folks have recovered from last week's loss to Nebraska. They're here to cheer on the Buffs, and so far there's plenty to cheer about. CU leading Oklahoma State 7-3 as Cordell Stewart and the Buffs begin the second quarter. Okay. Buffs with the ball at their own 37-yard line. Cordell Stewart with just one completion on the day in three attempts. And a flag, just as Stewart is ready to take the snap. And I think they're going to say somebody lined up in the neutral zone. And I would guess it may have been the left tackle, Tony Birdie who looked like he took a lot of the football that time. Dead ball foul. In the neutral zone. Second down. Now, we hear that a lot, David, in the neutral zone. Can you explain that for us? Well, as an offensive lineman, you want to take as much as the, of, of the football as you can. You want to get your headgear to where it's just as close to the tip of the football pointing your direction as you possibly can. But if in the estimation of the, in this case, line judge, you are in the neutral zone over the football, then they blow the play dead before it snapped. So it's second and 15. Cordell to a wide open Savoy, a nice cutback. Oh. He gets across midfield and brought down at the Oklahoma State 46, and it's a first down. Jake Grossfield coming back from his defensive line spot to make the tackle. Well, Phil Savoy showing you that uh, even when Michael Westbrook graduates this year, I think things are going to be okay at the wide receiving spot. Again, excellent protection. Savoy is a red shirt freshman, and a big guy. Watch these moves. After he catches the football, makes something happen. Extremely quick. He's about 6'4", and as you see, 190 pounds. A little bit bigger than that. Good hands and excellent feet. First down at the Oklahoma State, 46. Buffs stay on the ground this time. It's Salam, and he'll get a couple yards out of that. Alamu Bailey makes the stop. And some first quarter stats. Oklahoma State, the dominant team as far as these numbers go. But CU leading in the ballgame 7-3. to three. Take a look at time of possession. The opening drive by the Cowboys took almost eight and a half minutes off the clock. But all they could get out of that was a field goal. Second and seven. The 
The quickie to Savoy, and he is caught for a loss. That brings him back to the original line of scrimmage, a loss of two yards. Johnny Jones, the coverage. Jones, a junior college transfer out of Conyers, Georgia. Brings up third and nine for CU. The second quarter just underway. A good rush by Oklahoma State. Almost intercepted. Getting his hands on the ball was the quarterback, Jeroy Johnson. Stewart off the mark quite a bit with that throw intended for James Kidd. And again, excellent pass protection. Cowboys that time blitzing and everybody was picked up and it looked like Cordell Stewart expected Ray Carruth to hook up and Carruth kept on coming toward the middle of the field. Back to punt for CU Andy Mitchell. And to receive it Andrea Richardson for Oklahoma State. Mitchell gets off a high and deep punt. CU can't quite get to it. The ball took one last loop over the head of Ted Johnson as he tried to down it. Instead, Oklahoma State will get it at its own 20, a 45-yard punt by Mitchell. Over 700 flights coming and going every business day running out non-stop to nearly a hundred cities. Covering the sky with more flights from Denver than all other airlines combined. A kaleidoscopic array that could only be brought to you by United and United Express. We'll move mountains for you. Come fly our friendly skies. When I was in medical school, I was so nervous examining my first patient. I forgot to put the ends of the stethoscope in my ears. Actually, being with patients is what I like best. Human touch, somehow it benefits a person's health. Maybe the best thing about a stethoscope is, it brings me this close to my patients. As a member of Kaiser Permanente, you can have a personal physician, one like Dr. Les Naiman. Kaiser Permanente, good people, good medicine. McCartney pacing the sideline a bit. His buffs in the lead, 7-3 over Oklahoma State, but frankly, it wasn't supposed to be this tough. Oklahoma State with the ball at its own 20. Jones going deep, looking for Denson, overthrows him. And on the coverage was Chris Hudson. And Tony Jones threw that ball a little bit too quickly and looked like he really didn't have an idea as to the separation between Raphael Denson and Chris Hudson. That could have been a big play. Tony Jones started last season as the backup. He won the starting job early, started a couple games, and then separated the shoulder. So this is his first full season for Oklahoma State at the quarterback position. On the pitch, it's David Thompson. And he is hit hard by Ted Johnson and Steve Rosga. A gain of three. And some other scores for you. Kansas State now leading Iowa State 14 to nothing. A couple of days ago, Iowa State head coach Jim Walton announced he would resign, effective at the end of the season. Air Force leading at West Point, 7 to nothing over Army. A lot at stake for the Falcons. The commander in chief's trophy, possible bowl game. Fourth ranked Florida. No problem with Southern Miss. Right now, the Buffs are a bit of a problem. They're, or excuse me, Oklahoma State, third and seven. And Jones going deep again. This time, he overthrows Denson again. 
the Cowboys right now, will have to punt. I'm sorry, guys. I think right now Pat Jones may be saying to those who make the play selection, hey, wait a minute, Let, let's get back in the running game a little bit. Ward is not capable of dropping back in a pro-style offense and throwing the ball. And that's what we've kind of got ourselves into here in the last couple of series. Greg Ivey back at his own nine-yard line to punt the ball for Oklahoma State. And Chris Hudson averaging ten and a half yards a return. That's a heck of a punt. Backs Hudson up to his own 18. It also gives him a little room to run. And Chris gets it back across the 40, marked out at the 43. That's a punt of 60 yards by Ivy. And a pretty nice return coming back, 25 for Hudson. We'll take a break with 11.40 to go, second quarter. The dog eats his dinner from an old tin pan. Jake drinks his Coors from a cold yellow can. The two hooked up in Boulder one purple night. Wasn't part of the plan, it just worked out right. They've been coming up here on Wednesdays for years. Just a guy, a dog, and a couple of beers. See, Jake does what he wants, and for that he's proud. Never worries much about pleasing the crowd. He'll tell you, if you do what you like, you'll like what you do. For Jake, it's an old friend and the right kind of brew. Cold, clean, original Coors. Because you feel like it. At Blackjack Pizza, we deliver more than just great pizza. We deliver a promise. A promise that your pizza is made with the freshest ingredients and the best tasting sauce, all at the best price around. And we deliver. Blackjack Pizza. No gimmicks, just great pizza. Call today and order the Blackjack Family Pack. We'll deliver two large, two-topping pizzas, four salads, and four drinks for the value-packed price of $15.99. Call Blackjack now. A gorgeous fall day here, David. I choose to Very go nice. without the coat. You choose to go with it. I'm a little bit nippy, to tell you the truth. Ray Friedman, our staff man, sitting right next to you. And the Buffs with the ball. At their own 42-yard line. Salam up the middle. A couple of yards brought down by Norman Williams. And Williams with some words for Rashad. Rashad Salam already with 19 touchdowns this year. That ties a CU record held by Bobby Anderson, who's sitting in the KOA radio booth today, helping them out with their broadcast. So one more score for Rashad, and he is CU's all-time touchdown leader for the season. Over the middle, Stewart. Was it complete? They haven't gotten a call yet from the officials. Christian Fourier made the catch, if it is a catch. Well, it's a catch. I think the question was whether Trent Fisher, the free safety, got there a little bit early. Stewart is locked on Fourier all the way. Move inside, bypass the linebacker, and that is very close to pass interference. An excellent catch by Christian Fourier. He does that so well, catching that ball away from his body. Senior out of Northridge, California, gives his team a first down at the Oklahoma State 46. And a number of white jerseys jump over the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they were provoked, though. There was so much movement there, it was hard to tell who caused what. Well, they may be provoked, but I don't think they were drawn. This will go against Oklahoma State. Pat Jones and Bill McCartney. They've been 
facing each other for 11 years now. McCartney with the edge, 6-5 and 1. Six wins, five losses, one tie with Oklahoma State. And the Buffs looking at first down, five yards to go. On the play action, Stewart. A nice move by Fourier. Gets loose inside the 20, down to the Oklahoma State 18. Well, Christian Fourier has played since he was a freshman, and when you catch a ball like this, you just got great confidence in your hands. Just a stretch route, he'll go out and sit down, then wait and see if Stewart chooses him, but he just reaches out and plucks the thing. And then nimble enough that he can circle inside and pick up some additional yardage. Buffs will miss Christian Fourier after this season. How do you project him as a pro player? I think he's really going to be a good pro player. He's strong enough at 235, 37 pounds, and he'll block you, but he's an excellent receiver. Very good in the passing game. So the Buffs with a first down at the Oklahoma State 19. This is Salam. Brought down from behind. Salam, Salam. By Jay Grossfield and Lorenzo Green. Well, Green the primary. That's the second time that we've seen CU try to bounce a handoff outside and somebody from the interior part of the defense catch him before they can get to the corner. It's not a bad uh, year's worth of work. Averaging over six and a half yards a carry. Well, he wasn't hurt by that 317 yard effort against Texas. Second and 10. The Buffs at the Cowboys 19. On the option, Stewart keeps. And down to the 10. He's about a yard short of the first down. Bailey makes the tackle. Cordell Stewart, as you see, almost uh, 500 yards rushing, and he's got the majority of that in the option or when he pulls it uh, down and tucks it under his arm in the passing game. Big enough and strong enough that he'll break some tackles. You cannot arm tackle Cordell Stewart. Cordell scored the only Buffs touchdown on a running play, and so far in the afternoon, he has 36 yards rushing. Third and two. Again, the option, Salam. And fumbles the ball, but it goes out of bounds. No, they say he didn't fumble it. The ground caused it. He was down at the 10, which is the line of scrimmage. Now you have an interesting decision as we take a look again. The option play. Cordell may have pitched this one a little bit too quick. Great block by Heath Irwin. And a nice play here defensively as uh, Lewis Adams comes up from his safety spot and hauls Rashawn down. He actually lost the ball before he hit the ground. But it went out of bounds, and the bus retained possession and we'll try the field goal. The crowd wanted Bill McCartney and the Buffs to go for it on fourth and one from the Oklahoma State 10, but and now the crowd is starting up again with the chance. Go for it. And it looks like Bill McCartney is listening to him. Boscarichian and the field goal unit come off the field, and the offense comes back on. See, I, I think this is a good move, too. You're down to the 10-yard line. You've had a nice, methodical drive. You know your club is not really energized here in the first half. This might be a good way to tell them, hey, I've got confidence in you. We're going to go ahead and go for it. And you might be giving up three points, but even if you don't make it, Oklahoma State is set back at its own 10-yard line. A long way to go the other way. Next week, the Buffs travel to Lawrence, Kansas for a game against the Kansas Wildcats. Excuse me, the Kansas Jayhawks. You'll have every Kansas grad <laughs> calling you tonight at it, News 4. They, <laughs> <laughs> the, I should have waited for the graphic. I wouldn't have made the mistake. It's the Kansas oh, Jayhawks my. and the Kansas State Wildcats, of course. And we will televise this game for you. However, it won't be here on Channel 4. You'll have to switch over to Channel 20, KTVD. And once again, that's the Kansas Jayhawks. Cordell Stewart on fourth and one. The Buffs going for it at the Cowboys' 10-yard line. Salam. He's very close to the first down. We're going to get a measurement on this one. Alamo Bailey, the stop. 
Well, he did not get a favorable spot, I don't think. And from where the ball sits now, I think Oklahoma State may have very well held. They brought out the sticks, and yes, CU is short by about four or five inches. And Bill McCartney, not a very happy man right now. And they ran the isolation to the left side. And it looked like got a pretty good surge. You see a corner blitz from the outside. That's Johnny Jones, who's unaccounted for, and tried to honk it up in there behind Lyndon Henry. He you see Jones gets to Salam early. And then an excellent play by Link Harden, the linebacker, who gets enough of Rashawn Salam to stop his momentum. So Oklahoma State takes over on downs from their own 10-yard line. This is Richardson. Leaps one tackler, gets to the sideline, and pushed out of bounds at the 32. A gain of 22 yards. Chris Hudson does the pushing. And I can see why a lot of schools wanted Andre Richardson last year. It was an excellent job, just a counterplay. Ted Johnson can't get him, although he didn't really have a good shot, and Chris Hudson has to turn himself around and then finally run Richardson out of bounds. And Oklahoma State has done a nice job up front. And coming into this game, that was one of the areas of concern. They didn't feel like their offensive line was as good as it has been in the past, but they have been plenty effective here this afternoon. This is David Thompson. He gets a yard, maybe two. Ted Johnson, the tackle. Well, it's hard to believe a kid of Andre Richardson's talent getting out of Texas with all those Texas schools. He hails from Dallas. He's a true freshman. Right now, you're looking at David Thompson out of Oklahoma. Gain of a couple on that last play brings up second and eight. We've got 6.50 to go in the first half. This is Thompson. And he's brought down at the line of scrimmage by the linebacker Mike Phillips and Shannon Clavell. Oklahoma State 7-3 about midway through the second quarter. Boy, has it been rough for OSU over the last four seasons. They have won just two, just two Big 8 games in the last four years. Third and eight. Jones looking downfield. Has a man. Denson, and it is a first down. Steve Rosga on the coverage. Again, they, they throw the ball only once deep to Raphael Denson, but when you do that, you're talking about the fastest Oklahoma State player. He's about a 4-3-2 guy in the 40. The two-deep zone coverage, Dalton Simmons chucks him inside, then sinks out, and Denson just runs a nice pattern. Gets the curl, sets down, and finds that open seam for his quarterback. Raphael Denson out of Ardmore, Oklahoma. He runs track for that school also. Pretty good at the 55 meters. He and the Cowboys with a first down. At their own 43. Jones overthrows the tight end, Derek Jones. So Jones to Jones does not connect. And no, they are not related. Tony is out of Tulsa, and the tight end, Derek, is out of Palestine, Texas. And that's a throw that even a guy that doesn't throw it a lot, you have to complete. The Tony Jones knows they have the tight end wide open in the flat. Five for 11, 59 yards. Did have a 60-plus yard touchdown Derek! pass callback. And now it's second and 10. The pitch to Richardson. Boy, he gets back to that line of scrimmage quickly, but he's also racked up quickly by the CU defense. He gained him a couple. Ryan Olson the stop. Word from the sideline. CU wide receiver Ray Carruth has a bruised right quadricep. It's 
the upper right leg. He might play, but right now he's going to be held out as a precautionary measure. See if that improves any this afternoon. Five minutes to go, first half. Oklahoma State with the ball at its own 45. Down 7-3 to three to the Buffaloes. And Tony Jones uses his third and final timeout of the half. We'll take a timeout also with CU leading 7-3. Twenty-five years ago, a mother's joy turned to sorrow. Her newborn baby taken away by doctors who said little Amanda wouldn't live. He said, just a minute, just a minute, there's something wrong here. I never saw her again. Now, 25 years later, nothing could prepare Barb McLeaf for the shocking truth she was about to discover. Mandy had been looking for me. Why wasn't she told, my child's alive? News Force Amy Spohr with a remarkable story. After 25 years, what's it like to meet your daughter for the first time? Monday at 10 on News 4. Pool. Medical research seemed very exciting to me, like uh, being a detective. So when I became a doctor, I uh, went into research at NIH. But after a while, I really missed being with patients. If you like people, you like practicing medicine. That's really it. Though sometimes, I still feel a bit like a detective. As a member of Kaiser Permanente, you can have a personal physician, one like Dr. Nicholas Rosentine. Kaiser Permanente. Good people, good medicine. Bill McCartney and his ball club come into this game a huge favorite, a 30-point favorite, but lead by just 7-3 to three with 4.50 to go in the half. Oklahoma State has the ball at its own 45. This pass complete to Denson. He's hit at the 49. He's well short of the first down. Chris Hudson and Dalton Simmons do the head knocking there. That'll bring up fourth down for Oklahoma State. They'll have to punt. Well, again, you try to get the football into the hands of people who are your playmakers, and without question, that guy is. You want to find different ways to get Rafael Denson the football. Greg Ivey, last time out, boomed one 60 yards. And Chris Hudson returned that punt 25. He'll try to do the same this time. Oklahoma State takes a penalty purposely. This will give Ivy a little more room to work with on the punt. Clock running, 3.50 to go, first half. Seems to be some confusion on the Oklahoma State side of the ball. But they get the snap off, and Ivy gets the punt off. It's high, and it's deep. Hudson decides to run it back with a white jersey right in front of him, and it was not a good decision. He is pulled down at the three-yard line. I was waiting for him to throw up the fair catch signal, Dave, weren't you? Well, I think he thought about it and then last minute decided not to. Well, for Broncos coverage with a different beat, tune into Broncos beat. Gary Miller is joined by Broncos players Reggie Rivers and Jeff Campbell tonight and every Saturday night at 6.30 right here on News 4. Broncos beat is the only Broncos preview show available. And you can catch it tonight only on News 4, the home of the Broncos. 48-yard punt for Greg Ivey. And CU now with its back to its own goal line. Stewart over the middle, complete to Savoy. A first down and a little more, up to the 20. I really like Phil Savoy. I think he's going to turn out to be an excellent receiver for Colorado. And again, he's big enough 
six two six three right in that area that he can go across the middle and catch the ball and yet he's got uh, very good feet for a guy that tall he's getting a lot of playing time today because michael westbrook is being held out the all-american candidate has a foot sprain and he's also developed an infection in the foot so they're going to play it safe with him going deep to james kidd and incomplete so actually, CU playing without its two starting wide receivers, Westbrook and Ray Carruth. Carruth has left the game with a leg injury. And there goes Kerry Hicks, who left the game early in the first quarter with a knee injury. So the Buffs getting beaten up a little today. Boy, Kerry Hicks is a heck of a player. You hate to lose him. Hopefully it won't be for any extended period of time. Second and 10 for CU. Salam. A nice oh. hole up the middle and runs right over one defender. Finally turned out of bounds at the 44-yard line. A gain of 24 yards. Lewis Adams finally wrapped him up. Well, we've talked about his numbers, his speed and quickness, but his strength, I think, is his most outstanding quality. This is just a slant, strong side slant. And watch what he does to the weak side corner, Johnny Jones, who has the angle on it. And it really puts his helmet right where it should be. Just runs right through the tackle. I mean, you work hard as a defensive coordinator to get your guys in the right spots waiting for him. But then with that kind of strength, it just runs through people. First down for the Buffs at their own 44. Off the hands of Phil Savoy and Goodwin. Johnny Jones on the coverage. And you can't see the quarterback, but Phil Savoy is sitting there a long time. Enough time to raise his hand and say, here I am. The timing of that play was not good. When you run that hook pattern, you want to be planting the outside foot just as that quarterback is about set to throw. Second and ten on the option. Salam. A nice cut outside. Very close to first down yardage. They'll call him out at the Oklahoma State 48. So he's still a couple yards short. The option play again, good blocking. Savoy outside gets enough of the cornerback Jones to allow Salam the option to cut up inside. And a little discussion amongst the Oklahoma State Cowboy players and that man, Rashawn Salam, 56 yards, a, a modest first half for Rashawn. Third and two. Under three minutes to go, first half. This is Salam, has the first down. And he's down to the Oklahoma State 41. Jay Grossfield, the tackle. First down, Colorado. Scores from back east. Florida State, eighth rank, leading Georgia Tech. And Florida putting the hit on Southern Miss. Nebraska, no problem with Kansas. That's still early in that game. Kansas State, three touchdowns ahead of Iowa State. First down for the Buffs at the Oklahoma State 41. Stewart with tons of time gets it off to Salam. And he is inside the 30, another first down. Second catch for Rashawn Salam. Now the most impressive thing about the CU passing attack today has been the, the uh, pass protection. Cordell Stewart steps up. I mean, there's not a white jersey within three or four yards of him. Rashawn Salam again, the outlet man, just hooks up and waits to see if he's going to get the football. Penn State leading Bill Mallory's Indiana Hoosiers, 28 to 7. You think Northeast Louisiana's had a bit of a tough schedule this boy, year? Oh boy, man! Cordell Stewart on the option keeps it, and he is close to a first down. He'll be a little bit short, about a half a yard, and down to the Oklahoma State 20. See you seemingly playing with uh, a lot of confidence right now, Dave. Yeah, I, I would call this drive, and even the last drive, which they went forward and forth and didn't get it, as methodical. Yeah, not a lot of emotion, just making a few plays here and there, five yards here, six, seven, eight, completion for a first down. And I don't want to say going through the motions, but certainly just doing a nice job knocking Oklahoma State off the ball. See you starting to 
trying to get another winning streak started. The 11 game win streak was snapped by Oklahoma. That's the tight end, Desmond Dennis. He's inside the 15. Finally brought down by Cleavon Williams and Trent Fisher. But Desmond Dennis playing in place of Matt Lepsis, who separated his shoulder last year, or last week in Nebraska, is out for the year. Here's a big guy that's going to be around for a while. He's 255 pounds and a sophomore. Could have played a little linebacker. Coaches gave him his choice, actually, to play tight end or linebacker. And <laughs> what would you pick? <laughs> no doubt about that one. Complete to James Kidd. Let's see where they mark it. Oh, they're calling it in. Are they calling it complete? Yeah, yeah they are down. calling it complete. It is a first down. A nice pass by Cordell Stewart and Kidd with his first catch on the afternoon. But when you have James Kidd's speed, you must respect that deep. They tried to get him on a on a deep route earlier. This time makes a nice adjustment to the football and on a ball well thrown outside. Only place that anybody can get to that is on the outside, and that's your receiver. Does a good job getting that second foot down, although he doesn't need to in college ball. One foot is all you need. First and goal from the three. Salam. Doesn't quite get it done. Stopped at the one yard line by Jeroy Johnson. As we told you a few minutes ago, Rashawn Salam needs one touchdown to break the record for touchdowns in one season by a CU buff. He's sitting on 19, and one more will put him past Bobby Anderson on the all-time list. Second and goal from the one. They go to the air. Touchdown, Phil Savoy. Well, I tell you, what a great throw by Cordell Stewart. I was a bit shocked. From the one yard line, I thought they'd punch it in. Phil Savoy's first touchdown catch of his collegiate career. He makes the catch, but watch where this ball is placed. Just a quick drop, and that thing, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't throw a better pass. Oscar Ritchie in the extra point attempt. He's got it. And with 19 seconds to go in the half, CU with a score and a 14 to 3 lead. We'll keep it right here for the kickoff. Hi, Bill McCartney's boys coming to life finally. McCartney, CU's all time winning as coach. In his 13th year, he comes in with a record of 89, 55, and 5. Gary Miller's Sports Extra is the place to be on Sundays for a full recap of every Broncos game. Join Gary this Sunday night at 11.05, right after the Bill McCartney Show, for all the highlights and post-game reaction to tomorrow's game against the L.A. Rams. Your extra Broncos coverage is only available on Gary Miller's Sports Extra. That's Sunday nights at 11.05 on News 4, your home for sports. Pretty good drive that time. I think Colorado took over on their own four-yard line. There it is, 12 plays, 96 yards in three minutes and eight seconds. And Phil Savoy on his first touchdown reception. Oscar Ritchie in the kickoff. He squibs it. They don't want to take a chance on a good run back with just 19 seconds to go in the half. And they get exactly what they want. That was Jeff Grenier taking the kickoff. He's a former CSU Ram, transferred to Oklahoma State a couple of years ago. Oklahoma leading Missouri. That one's in Norman at the half. And Penn State putting the womp on Indiana. Late fourth quarter. 16 seconds to go. Oklahoma State with the ball at its own 25. They've been putting the womp on a lot of people this year, haven't they? What are they averaging? 50 points a game? A whole Something bunch. This is the fullback, Joe Jefferson. You know when they're giving it to the fullback, they want to play it safe. That's his first carry of the day. 
And they'll let the clock wind down. No timeouts left for Oklahoma State. We are at the half with CU leading 14 to 3. And the Buffs carrying a little momentum into that halftime locker room after having just scored on the touchdown pass from Cordell Stewart to Phil Savoy. Let's go down to the field and Mark we're McIntosh. Right here. We are, we are. Mark? Well, after kind of a slow start, second quarter, you guys played pretty well and yeah, took control of the game. Yeah, played better. Played better in the second quarter. Uh, should have pay, may, be able to make a yard when we need it. The only reason I hesitated is I thought we needed more than a yard. When I found out we needed a yard, then that's when I decided to go for it. I don't like uh, coming away with no points when you're down in there that deep. Emotionally, uh, were you a little concerned coming in how your team would be, but it seemed like they did pick it up? Sure. Well, we're playing without Hicks now. We're yeah. playing without Westbrook, without Lepsis. And, and Carruth is out of there, so yeah, I'm concerned. All right, thank you. Coach Bill McCartney, his team getting hit by the injury bug, but they do lead here at halftime, 14 to three, have taken control here in the second quarter, and expect to come out in the second half and probably dominate the Cowboys. Back up to you guys. The injury bug is right. Ray Carruth, a starting wide receiver, Michael Westbrook, starting wide receiver, and Kerry Hicks, a starting defensive lineman, all out of this ball game with injuries. We'll take a break, come back for some halftime festivities at Folsom Field. When we developed our new advanced handling and driver control system, we looked to Lexus and BMW. But we didn't stop there. Introducing the all-new Chevy Blazer. With the exclusive driver control system, Even if you never take it this far, it's nice to know it's there. Is getting into your briefcase more of a job than your job? Old-fashioned briefcases have two positions, open and closed. Introducing the first briefcases to split the difference. Samsonite's new smart attachés. They open all the way when laid flat, but a patented smart hinge tells them to open like a portfolio when upright. So you can get to your work without all the work. The Smart Attaché Series, still from Samsonite. My name is Victor Crawford. Seven years ago, I went to work for the tobacco industry as a lobbyist. I took the job because the money was good, and besides, I've been a smoker myself since I was a kid. Now I have cancer and I don't have a lot of time left, but I'd like to undo some of the damage that I did as a lobbyist. Believe me, the tobacco industry is in business in Colorado to make money and not to protect your health. Remember that. I know. Colorado's early miners didn't have time to wait for committees to make decisions when they needed a loan, so they turned to what is now First Federal Bank. Well, I'm Pete Smythe, and today First Federal consumer loan customers still count on low rates and fees and a quick decision right in the local branch. And with 20 Colorado branches, you're never far from the money you need. So for home improvement, a new car, or for any good purpose, stop into the First Federal branch nearest you. Since 1885, First Federal, Colorado's convenient consumer bank. Political specialist Ralph Allen, only on News 4. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you at halftime in Boulder, Colorado. The Buffs leading the Oklahoma State Cowboys 14 to 3. And Dave, the Buffs showing a little more life near the end of the first half, but I would imagine he's going to try and light a fire under him at halftime, huh? Well, again, we talked about that at the top of the telecast. I really think it's tough for Bill McCartney to get these kids back to that emotional level that they had last week. Matter of fact, I think it's impossible. What you hope here is that you have enough talent overall that even if you can't reach that emotional level you can simply overwhelm whichever team you're going to play and I think that's probably the case in the first half not a lot of energy but a better team obviously with CU I think if I was CU I'd be worrying about that defensive line uh, they had a disappointing day against Nebraska and today once again Oklahoma State running the ball very very well well, and plus you lose Kerry Hicks. We don't know how bad that injury is, but sure, you don't want to see first-line guys uh, become injured. And I, I think defense is a lot of emotion and how you take charge early in the game, and this team was flat coming out, and we expected that. So I would guess that the, the Buffs' defense in the second half will play much better. All right, we've got a lot more to talk to you about this halftime with the Buffs leading 14-3. to We'll come right back and do that with you.
Hey, football fans, it's the video coupon. Call Pizza Hut now during the Wade Phillips Show and order your Meat Lover's Pizza. A medium Meat Lover's Pizza loaded with six delicious meat toppings, only $8.99. And a second medium pizza, just five bucks. Call now during Wade, because when it's over, so is this offer. There's a reason why Kaufman's Tall and Big Men Shop stands above our competition. We dress you in style. First in style, selection, and service. Kaufman's the style leader. Ron White, convicted serial killer. Denied. Clyde Savage, killer of a 12-year-old child. Denied. Gary Davis, convicted rapist and murderer. Denied. Johnny Lee Rush. Each of these violent criminals appealed their convictions. And in each case, Colorado's tough attorney general, Gail Norton, fought to keep them behind bars. And won. That's why law enforcement officers all over the state back Colorado's tough attorney general, Gail Norton. Why do you come to Mile High Flea Market? This is the biggest flea market I've ever been to. It's, it's gorgeous here. They have a lot of Southwestern stuff. They have a lot of interesting stuff here. Just for all the good buys you can get. Turkey legs. This is a real flea market. There's just no comparison to this. This is the best. Because my husband's the king of cheap. Whether it's great bargains, fabulous food, or a day of fun, you'll find something for everyone at Colorado's largest flea market, Mile High Flea Market. Open weekends and Wednesdays year-round at I-76 and 88th Avenue. Well, football season winding down on college campuses across the country, which means basketball is soon to start up. Let's go down to the field now. Mark McIntosh wants to talk about that sport. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. You know, the way the weather's been the past few days, it was time to get inside, although today is a beautiful day. But basketball is starting. Both the men and women's basketball teams here at the University of Colorado began practicing back in the middle of October. And, of course, that means Seal Berry's women's basketball team is getting ready to defend back-to-back -back Big 8 championships going after their third straight. And I tell you, they had media day the other day, and Seal Berry is convinced that this team might be the best she's ever had at Colorado. The Coors Event Center is noisy again. Basketball's back. And for the women of Colorado, it holds promise of being better than ever. We know we belong now. I'm not so sure two years ago in Missoula, when we beat, it was such an upset, you know. And we remember, we pretend like it wasn't an upset. You know, the loss that we had that ended our season last year was, it was very distasteful. I think that, you know, I have a hunger inside me that since this is it, uh, you know, I want to do everything I can every day in practice to get better. Senior Shelly Sheets will once again lead the Colorado Charge, the perfect point guard, the consummate floor leader. The Cedar Rapids, Iowa native spent most of her summer working on her offensive game. Offensively, I learned a couple things on my, on my shooting form, uh, different techniques, uh, getting more spin on the ball, um, and actually uh, following through on my shot. Center Erin Scholes returns for her sophomore year, a year older, a year wiser but still eager to improve despite winning Big 8 Newcomer of the Year honors last season. I know what it's like now, and I know what I need to do. I know what I need to work on, and I'm working on it every day. <laughs> Coach Barry went overseas to find Scholes some help inside, recruiting Isabel Fijakowski. The 22-year-old played for the French national team. Seal Barry coached against her, then recruited her. I mean, I can't touch her offensive game. I mean, I, believe me, when you see her play, I didn't teach her that. <laughs> she came with that. <laughs> Coming off a Sweet 16 national tournament appearance a year ago and back-to-back -back Big 8 regular season titles, the Buffs expect more in 94-95. Their work ethic, up before dawn working out, hustling throughout practice, shows CU's committed to success. <laughs> Not too many people are up at 5.30, you know, getting to Dow Ward to lift weights. So I think, um, you know, we are sacrificing in that area, but I think it is, we do know why we're doing it. The CU women's basketball team will open up its season Monday night with an exhibition game against the Athletes in Action over at the Coors Event Center at 7 o'clock. The men's team 
Today, immediately following this ball game, about 45 minutes after the conclusion of the Buffs and the Cowboys, we'll have an inter-squad game over at the CU Coors Event Center if anybody's interested in going over and checking out Joe Harrington and his squad. Les, back up to you. Thanks, Mark. And, of course, we wish Joe and Seal and their kids all the best in the upcoming basketball season. I will take a break, come back, give you some scores and highlights. Hey, it's the time of year when you're thinking about hitting the hill and you're thinking about the ride that's going to get you there. Well, check this out. Right now, during Ford Truck Month, your Ford dealer's got the best selection of Ranger Super Cabs around. And because he knows you need power to get up to hit the fresh, he's thrown in a big four-liter motor at no extra charge. Now, that's a deal that's just plain bad to the bone. From bridges high over sunlit bays to tranquil trails by thundering falls. From cities built on ancient legends to promising skylines that shape our tomorrows. From the mountains to the sea, there's Conoco. With thousands of stations across America, gasolines and motor oils of exceptional quality, and the spirit of hospitality so many have come to count on. It's no wonder Conoco is the hottest brand going. Hi, I'm Sherry Wolf. I believe what you don't know can hurt you. As Secretary of State, I'll hold town meetings on ballot initiatives. That way you can ask questions on issues that affect your life. My opponent has a different idea. Her office installed a 900 number staffed by prison inmates. These convicts have access to personal private information that could be used to target people and homes for crime. As your Secretary of State, I'll make sure information pays, not crime. Truth. Most of us do become our parents. Our kids will probably do what drives us the craziest for a while. Aunt Sophie will laugh at anything. And Uncle Joe was right. When you've got your health, you've got it all. Provident Health Partners, a group of doctors, healthcare professionals, senior services, and hospitals who happen to agree with Uncle Joe. Provident Health Partners. Think of us for life. We're at halftime at Folsom Field. See you leading Oklahoma State 14 to 3. Let's talk education now, okay? The desire to learn is what drives people to excel whether on the football field or in the classroom. Nowhere is that more apparent than in the RNA world of CU Boulder chemist Tom Check and his gifted student researchers. CU's Dirk Martin has that story. This is the sort of thing that biochemists spend all of their time doing. We have very small amounts of samples, so we work with, and they're very valuable to us. Although he's a Nobel Prize winner and his research in rival nucleic acid or RNA may help to fight viral disease, what chemist Tom Check values most is learning how the human body works. The truth is the thing that really drives us, that really keeps people here in the lab late at night um, working long hours at low pay is not the uh, curing cancer as, as the immediate focus but is really much more the desire to learn something about how the, the little machines that are present in all of our cells, how, what do they look like and how do they work. That drive is evident in his busy lab where students and assistants from different technical and educational backgrounds work together. This is Barb Golden. She's uh, trying to make crystals of RNA molecules so that we can shine x-rays through them and from the diffraction pattern. See, here's, here's one of our pictures over here on the wall. Sort of a road map. That just the real advantage of working in this lab is the breadth of experience of people who come here. Um, people who do things from x-ray crystallography to new approaches in gene therapy. Most of the research that's done is done by people who are in training status. There are many graduate students getting their PhD degrees. There are uh, a few undergraduate students who are doing senior thesis projects. There are postdoctoral fellows who've obtained their PhD at another institution and are doing a few years of more advanced study here. Isn't this really education at its best? When, when people are, t are interacting one-on-one, -on -one, when they're pushing back the frontiers of knowledge, when they're questioning things rather than simply believing everything they, they read. While pushing back the frontiers of knowledge is education at its best, it also can lead to important discoveries. 
such as when Czech discovered that RNA could splice itself, opening the door to the possible treatment of viral disease. These little RNAs, which we call ribozymes, have the ability to cut and thereby inactivate uh, other RNA molecules, like, for example, an RNA involved in a viral disease could be inactivated if one could provide one of these very specific RNA cutting agents to attack the uh, viral RNA. Czech is the first to say that there is no accurate way to predict whether RNA research will lead to a miracle treatment of viral disease. But he is certain that without this research, the chances of a treatment ever being developed are very slim. And we'll return for more halftime activities from Folsom Field after these messages and a word from the University of Colorado. With a busy lifestyle like mine, you look for every little thing that can save you time. That's why I opened my checking account at First Bank. They've got over 50 locations, so I can bank close to where I live, where I work, or any place in between. Now that's convenience. Try First Bank's free checking account. There's no minimum balance, no monthly service charges, and no annual fee in an ATM card, all for a full year. First Bank, the Colorado Bank for you. First Bank, check them out. Confused about who to vote for in the race for Colorado Treasurer? The state's leading newspapers aren't. They're all supporting Bill Owens. After interviewing both candidates, every major newspaper that endorses is supporting Bill Owens. They realize that Bill Owens' management background and successful legislative record are the right combination for Colorado Treasurer. What did they think about his opponent's resume? Apparently, not much. I'm Bill Owens, and I'm proud to be endorsed by Colorado's leading newspapers. I would really appreciate your vote for State Treasurer this Tuesday. Hi, I'm Mike Naughton with great news for truck buyers. My introductory sale of 1995 F-150s was a sellout. So I bought another 60 of them to sell for just $59.77. They're all four-wheel drives with air conditioning, anti-lock brakes, airbags, and overdrive transmission. Brand new 95 F-150 4x4s. While they last, just $59.77. In Aurora, or call 1-800-BIG-MIKE. You know, at AutoZone, we know our customers work just as hard as we do. So we're open when they need us, at night and on Sundays. And since two million folks each week count on AutoZone for what they need, when they need it, we're not about to let them down. That's why we carry so many parts and why we price them so low every day. You see, selling top quality parts at low prices every day is how we make a living. But helping customers, well, that's how we make friends. ZU Bob's Football on News 4 is brought to you by Pizza Hut, by Keystone Light, by your Denver Front Range Dodge dealer, by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado, by Midas, by Ankmar Door, and by First Federal Bank. Along the Continental Divide, new frontiers are discovered every day. It absolutely blew me away. All my own dreams. Open-minded. A keen insight. Powerful. It's been a great learning experience. Out west on the new frontier with a Buffalo Road, the University of Colorado. We're back at halftime, the end of halftime. See you leading Oklahoma State 14 to 3 at Folsom Field. And joining me in the booth right now is News 4 anchor and reporter. Alan Genet, what do you make of the game so far? Yeah, a lot of fun, Les. Actually, I'm, I'm still a little curious as to why during the first quarter, uh, the first quarter, uh, that uh, that uh, Rashawn Salam had his shoes tied by Cordell Stewart. I don't understand that. Well, that's one of the reasons I think Rashawn slipped on that turf. You know how your parents <laughs> always told you, tie your shoes or you're going to trip. Cordell came over and made sure the shoes were tied. Now, you grew up back east in the Massachusetts area. Yeah, and I did. I, did you follow any college football back uh, then? Not, a, not really uh, that much. You know why? Because the college I graduated from, Emerson College, we didn't have much of a sports program. We had like a, an intramural hockey team which got thrown out of the league after getting beaten up by a local community college. It wasn't particularly a good team. Not very good hockey either, you know. L let's stay on that <laughs> theme. Hockey and basketball attached to it because yeah. you, you've been, since you got to uh, Denver, you've been covering heavily the situation with the new arena that the Nuggets are proposing to the city. Where yeah. does that stand right now? They intend to play basketball and NHL hockey there. Yeah, they're hoping to get a hockey team. Of course, that's been put off now. Uh, at the moment, the NHL is having so many problems that uh, they have, they're not going for the stadium or the uh, team at the moment. 
But, uh, of course, that will come in due time. But uh, a lot of people who have been looking at it give it some pretty good chances, perhaps better chances than the Broncos have of getting a replacement for Mile High. In the next few weeks, we'll probably see a design of what this replacement for McNichols could look like. But that design will vary a lot because uh, the city planning office has some latitude in, uh, in working with the team in designing what it will look like. So we will see a design, but it may not be the final design that we see, but that will be coming out in just a couple of weeks when they start talking to neighborhood groups about the stadium. And area. when you're done covering that story, once that arena gets built, probably, yeah. you can start covering the uh, possible addition of seats to Folsom Field here because that's what's being talked about up here. Yeah, hopefully we can go all get a decent seat when we need one here. But, I, uh, I think you've got a pretty good one right now, Alan. <laughs> and I know I don't, you I don't mind it much. The food's been uh, <laughs> been cheap, too. That's that's the best part. All right, and I know you need to get back and uh, do that Thanks. 5 o'clock newscast with Kathy Walsh. So, Alan Janae, thank you for stopping by. And now Dave Logan will jump back onto the headsets and we'll do some uh, some highlights and statistics for you. Right after Oklahoma State, Kicks this ball off. Lawson Vaughn will do it for the Cowboys and back to receive it for CU. Herschel Troutman and James Kidd. CU leading 14 to 3 with a touchdown late in the second half going into that locker room with some momentum. This is Troutman about one yard deep. And he is hit hard at the 19 yard line. All right, David, let's take a look at some of those highlights from that first half. Well, really, offensively, there, there weren't a lot of highlights. This uh, a great run by Cordell Stewart. He tries to look left and throw the ball, and as you see, what he sees is nothing. Not a white jersey in sight, a little ball fake down the field, holds the cornerback Jones, and Cordell Stewart scampers into the end zone for the first of two Colorado touchdowns. Then a great throw. Stewart here to Phil Savoy. The fade pattern right on the money. That right before halftime. The CU leads 14-3. And now we're back to live action. CU with the first down. This is Salam. Gets it up to the 22. Gain of about three. And quickly some first half stats for you. Oklahoma State staying close in the total yardage category thanks to 128 yards rushing. Time of possession, Oklahoma State also dominating there. However, CU dominates on the scoreboard, 14 to three. And half of that time of possession for the Cowboys, 17-41, came or almost half on the first drive of the game. On second and seven, Stewart over the middle to Savoy, who makes a nice catch. First down yardage, he's across the 35 to about the 38. That's his fifth catch of the afternoon. What you're seeing now is the Cowboys starting to rotate a little bit based on the quarterback drop, and Cordell Stewart able to come out set behind the left tackle. Phil Savoy from the right side of the formation just curls and finds an open spot. First down at their own 38 are the Buffs. The option, Salam. And he's to midfield, a couple of flags fly. The blocking was good, maybe a little too good, David. The second half just underway. Les Shapiro and Dave Logan with you in Boulder. Boy, that is not a good sign. That's the starting nose guard for the CU bus, Kerry Hicks, who reportedly sprained the medial collateral ligament that left knee. Multiple fouls, holding, 10-yard penalty, most advantageous flag, repeat first down. You know, we've talked about the Buffs and their state of mind coming off last week's loss in Lincoln, Nebraska. I think not only is the team a little bit flat, but I think the crowd is a little bit flat, too. And I think that's that's human, human nature. It's a normal reaction to what happened last week. You just have to try to dig yourself out. Right now, CU trying to dig out of a first and 18 situation. This is Salam. He's up to the 34. Got about four yards on that carry. Bailey the tackle, and let's go down to the field now and Mark McIntosh. Thank you, Les. An update on Kerry Hicks. When he walked by, I asked him how you feel, and he said, uh, not too bad. It, uh, he expects only to be out maybe a couple of weeks, so it's not real serious. That's good news. 
And you're talking about the state of mind at halftime. McCartney was harping on the guys. Forget Nebraska. We're playing Oklahoma State. Get your minds focused. Back up to you guys. Second and 14 for CU from its own 34. taken down Stewart escapes the man putting the pressure on him was Javon Langford the man finally making the tackle was Eric Hobbs that is a great half yard run Javon Langford ran right over the top of Rashawn Salam who was trying to pass block him you see after the play he'd already gotten rid of Salam right there but could not corral Cordell Stewart again the strength Langford's about 275 Cordell Stewart, Stewart able to pull away and get back to the line of scrimmage. Now Langford is exceptionally quick, we've been told, and, and there was a good example of it right there. Pat Jones says physically he's the most impressive defensive end he's had in 16 years at Oklahoma State. Third and 14. Stewart to a wide open Savoy. It's going to be a foot race now. Savoy turns the defender oh. and drops the ball. And recovered by Oklahoma State's Jeroy Johnson. Boy, I think it Phil Savoy made the one cut and then continued to run to the middle of the field. He would have scored, but he tried to double back and just had the ball plucked right out of his grasp. A 56-yard play for naught. Well, you can see the Cowboys blow a coverage here. Savoy right down the middle of the field and... It looked like the free safety bit on the underneath rat, and Phil Savoy is all by himself. Now, the cutback to the middle of the field, I think he scores right here if he just continues to run. I agree with you. He's turned completely around. He tried to cut back. Jones reaches in. Excuse me, Adams reaches in and just knocks that ball free. So Oklahoma State, with the ball at its own six, tries the middle, no go. You know, the other thing on that play, David, and you being the former pro wide receiver, should he have transferred that ball to his left side when he went to the left? Well, he, he, you can see right there, he cuts back so tight, Adam's able to get a hand on it. I, I think at that particular time, you're just trying to think of scoring. But hindsight being 20-20, I think Savoy stays in the middle of the field. He's walking the end zone. Second and eight from their own eight. This is Thompson. He put a helmet into his own blocker. Got it up to the 14. Ryan Olson the stop. Olson playing in place of the injured Kerry Hicks. There's a timeout on the field, an official's timeout. Ryan Olson, a former All-State player from Green Mountain High School. Played a little bit of everything there. Running back, linebacker. First team all state as a junior and senior in Green Mountain. Thompson coming off the field with a little hitch in his giddy up. Medical staff will take a look at him. Bill McCartney probably wondering what he has to do to get his team going. I, I don't think there's anything you can do. And McCartney's one of the truly great motivators in the country, but in this situation, again, you just hope your talent overrides everything else. Third and two. Richardson tries the middle. And he is short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth and two or three yards. And Oklahoma State will have to punt. Matt Russell and Donnell Liamidi make the stop. First time I've seen any emotion from the crowd or the team in this football game with 10-15 to go. Defense comes up with a big stop and got a little excited about it. Greg Ivey having a wonderful day punting the ball, averaging a little better than 46 yards. And Chris Hudson back to receive it. That one he hit off his ankle. It's high, but not very deep. And Hudson calls for the fair catch at the Oklahoma State 48-yard line. We'll take a break. Buffs with the ball in Cowboys territory. 9.45 left in the third. 
thinking about getting a pizza? Yeah. But hey, don't get up. Call Pizza Hut. We deliver everything you crave. Irresistible Pizza Hut pizza. Loaded with any of our mouth-watering toppings. Your favorite garden vegetables. Or perfect pieces of pepperoni. All dripping with our hot, delicious cheese. We've got the pizza you want, the way you want it. Delivered right to your door. And now, for the ultimate delivery, get a medium meat lover's pizza delivered for just $8.99. Any second medium pizza is just 5 bucks. Call Pizza Hut Delivery today. Cousin Hank's wedding. Unbearable. I can see it now. Everybody, let's dance! Told ya. Check it out. Keystone. Who says you can't have a good time at a wedding? You can have a good time with a great tasting beer like Keystone, a smooth, never bitter taste in a specially lined can. You can have a good time. Hello. Keystone, the can beer. Dakota Sport V6 has more. More horsepower. More shoulder room. More hip room. And more cargo room than a comparable Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. But you don't have to put everything you've got into it. Dakota Sport V6. A little bigger, a lot better. At America's truck stop, the new Dodge. There's a young Buffs fan with his team leading 14 to 3. 9.45 to go, third quarter. Cordell Stewart on the day, 12 for 17, 186 yards and a touchdown pass. He's also run in one for a touchdown. And the Buffs start with the ball at the Oklahoma State, 47. Salam cuts back and dives up to the 45. Gain of three, Eric Hobbs the stop. Tell you, Oklahoma State in the first half defensively, pretty good job against the Buffs running attack. Colorado had 17 attempts for only 108 yards. And coming into to today's game, they've been averaging 278 yards on the ground. On second and seven, Salam again. Down to the 42. Still well short of the first. Alamo Bailey, the tackle. Salam here again, the counter trade, the hesitation step, and you get behind the guard and tackle, and then just kind of power your way up the field. They use that play, and they feel like the lead, just the regular handoff, is being overplayed. It's a misdirection play. Rashawn well below his average of 173 yards a game. Stewart, incomplete, intended for Savoy. That'll bring up fourth and four. And that will bring out the punting unit. Andy Mitchell trying to carry on the legacy of All-American punters at CU. Barry Helton, Keith English, Tom Ruin, Mitch Berger. Averaging 43 on the day. Trent Fisher to return it. Mitchell, a nice high kick. And a fair catch called for. Fisher lets it bounce. And CU will do the same down to the one-foot line. Blake Anderson catches that ball and holds on. And we'll take a break. Oklahoma State up against the wall. governor's race, the tobacco tax, campaign reform. The stakes are high, so turn to the station that's earned its reputation as the leader in election coverage, News 4. We're teaming up with Channel 6 to bring you Colorado's most complete election coverage. On Tuesday evening, turn to Channel 6 for News 4's non-stop election coverage, including live reports and analysis. Or enjoy your favorite shows on 4 with up-to-the-minute election returns. News 4 and Channel 6, election coverage that's a step ahead. Dear car owners, not everyone knows a car's suspension consists of the shocks, struts, steering, and alignment. Another thing not everyone knows, Midas is a suspension expert. So if your car pulls, shims, or bounces, 
Come to Midas for a thorough inspection and a guarantee on shocks and struts for as long as you own your car. That's the Midas way. I buy my own health insurance. It's my money, out of my own pocket. I don't want to spend more than I have to. Call 1-800-362-BLUE. I don't get sick. I hardly ever go to the doctor. Why should I spend a lot of money on health insurance? If you're in good health, we can save you money on health insurance. Call Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Colorado. 1-800-362-BLUE. Colorado leading Oklahoma State 14-3. That's Mike Gundy, former quarterback at Oklahoma State. He graduated in 1990, and right now he's their offensive coordinator. I tell you, he was a pretty darn good quarterback, too. He gave a lot of teams, including Colorado Pitts. Right now, he's got his work cut out for him. His Oklahoma State Cowboys at the two-yard line, their own two-yard line, facing second and nine. It's kind of funny. You get out midfield, and everybody clamors around the offensive coordinator, in this case, Mike Gundy, with all sorts of play ideas. You get backed up to your own one, and you can't find anybody within 10 feet of you. Nobody wants to talk to you. The man has no friends. No, it's on you. You go ahead and call it. <laughs> they stay on the ground and push the ball up to the five-yard line. Ted Johnson and Shannon Clavell there to meet the ball carrier, Andre Richardson. The Buffs a bit more fired up on defense now. All right, here's a trivia question for you. The last team to score 40 or more points against CU right here in Boulder. We'll wait a couple plays, give you the answer. Right now, Oklahoma State facing third and six from their own five-yard line. Richardson for a loss. Thrown back three yards. Darius Holland, the first man to meet him. And Greg Jones also there. Well, you see what happens when you get backed up against your own goal line and you don't throw the ball well. You've got to be ultra-conservative. Here's a toss, and Greg Jones is in the backfield. You can see before the ball carrier can turn his head upfield. Ivy to punt. Well, he gets off a whopper. Hudson at his own 48. God. And Chris gets it inside the 35-yard line. Back to that last Oklahoma State play, Dave. If you're going to run it from way back there, wouldn't you be smarter to just hand it off instead of pitching back into your own end zone? I, I don't think so. I think a pitch is, is okay. You're pitching it back four or five yards to the tailback. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll give you the answer to the trivia question. See you leading 14 to 3. Thinking about getting a pizza? Yeah. But hey, don't get up. Call Pizza Hut. We deliver everything you crave. Irresistible Pizza Hut pizza. Loaded with any of our mouth-watering toppings. Your favorite garden vegetables. Or perfect pieces of pepperoni. All dripping with our hot, delicious cheese. We've got the pizza you want, the way you want it. Delivered right to your door. And now, for the ultimate delivery, get a medium meat lover's pizza delivered for just $8.99. Any second medium pizza is just 5 bucks. Call Pizza Hut Delivery today. Not so long ago, Honda Accord and Toyota Camry were considered standards in the industry. Yet in the last two years, Dodge Intrepid has received more awards from the major automotive press than either of them. At a time when other companies were trying to catch up, we said, hey, why not pass? Now get up to $11.47 in total savings and package values during the Dodge Intrepid equipment sale. I can't believe we're going to visit Uncle John. I can just picture this. It's Scopey! <laughs> Do it. Who says you can't have a good time at Uncle John's? You can have a good time. Yeah, grab a beer. With a great tasting beer like Keystone. <laughs> a smooth, never bitter taste in a specially lined can. A great party, Uncle John. Yeah, what's next? Clyde Joe. You can have a good time. Keystone, the can beer. With 6.22 to go in the third quarter. See you leading Oklahoma State 14 to 3. And after the nice punt return by Chris Hudson, CU starts with the ball at the Oklahoma State 34. On the reverse. 
James Kidd can't hold on. He didn't get a very good toss. And that'll go for a big loss, about a 12-yard loss. Jeroy Johnson there to make the tackle. Well, he didn't get a very good pitch because Stewart got upended and had James Kidd held on to this ball, he walks home. The quick force outside prevents Stewart from actually taking a look. You must look at and see that guy you're pitching to. It looked like Cordell Stewart's eyes were on the force man. So the Buffs now with a long way to go, second and 21 from the Oklahoma State 45. Stewart going upfield. Christian Fourier was open but couldn't hold on. Ball thrown a little high. Would have been a tough catch to make. All right, what you've all been waiting for. The answer to the question, what was the last team to score 40 or more points against CU right here at Folsom Field? And the answer, the team in the white jerseys today, Oklahoma State beat the Buffs 41-21 in 1988. And you all remember why Oklahoma State was able to rack up 41 points that day. Yes, Barry Sanders. He ran up and down here. Not sure how many yards he had, but he had a bunch. Boy, he had a bunch in every game that year. That was the year he won the Heisman. Third and 21. Cordell looking for Kidd again. That ball far underthrown. And the Buffs will have to punt. Barry Sanders that day scored four touchdowns, which was about his average that year. You know, you, you look through that Oklahoma State media guide as I'm doing my research, David. Barry Sanders that year had four games where he went over 300 yards rushing and another three games where he went over 200. Uh, he's a great player. He was a great player then, and he's one of the, I think, top two running backs in the game today. Andy Mitchell, end over end. And it works to CU's advantage. That ball goes out of bounds at the seven-yard line. So once again, Oklahoma State looking at a lot of green in front of them. Well, News 4 is proud to continue real-time closed captioning of all News 4 produced CU Buffs football games, as well as all Broncos games. This is in addition to real-time closed captioning of News 4 at 6 a.m., 5 p.m., 6.30 p.m., and News 4 tonight at 10 p.m. Five twenty-five to go, third quarter. Buffs with a 14-3 lead. Oklahoma State with the ball. Tony Jones on the quick slant to Denson. He has the first down. He's up to the 20. Ted Johnson the stop, so along that, with Donnell Liamidi. Excuse me, Les. That's a pattern that if the quarterback puts it on the money, it's virtually impossible to stop. Only time you're going to stop this pattern if the ball is high and you've got the receiver extended out, you can get a shot on him. But look where this ball comes in. And Denson catches this right in the midsection and then has time to gather it in and get his eyes upfield. Slant's really tough to stop if it's well thrown. David Thompson, the middle. Three yards. Stopped by Matt Russell. Greg Jones also in on the tackle. That slant pattern is my favorite play in football, and I can't understand why more pro and college teams don't use the play when you have speedy receivers. Well, with all due respect, it's your favorite play in pro football because you never had to run it. It's not any fun. Not you can't find guys right? that want to know. They don't want to go in there because <laughs> they usually get laid out. I like the outcut, personally. <laughs> You're not going to meet a linebacker head on that way, No, right? the bench, that's all. On second and seven. David Thompson is stopped by Shannon Clavell before he can get anywhere. Cowboy what? bench really up in arms about a face mask call here. And I'm not so sure that they don't have a beef. Shannon Clavell, right side of your screen, watch him fight off the block. Does a nice job of getting rid of Calvin Menifee right there. And reaches out, does he get the face mask? Tough to see, that left hand may have been on it. Matt Russell there to close out. Left hand right there on the face mask, see? Bus may have got away with one right there. No flag on the play, so Oklahoma State looking at third and eight. Jones going along again, this time to Berrien. The ball thrown out of bounds, however, out of his reach. Chris Hudson on the coverage. 
That'll bring up another punting situation for Oklahoma State. Well, it seems like this entire quarter has been played on the CU side of the 50. They have kept Oklahoma State pinned down with good defense and timely punting. And give this guy, Greg Ivey, a lot of credit for not allowing Oklahoma State to get into any more trouble than it already is. He's come up with some great punts today. There's another one high and deep. Hudson, his own 35, and he is whacked. Hit as soon as he caught the ball by Cleavon Williams. A 43-yard punt, no return. Well, once again, want to remind you, it's Mac and Mac on Sunday nights, a full rundown of the CU attack. Yeah, Bill McCartney joins our Mark McIntosh every Sunday night at 10.35 for the Bill McCartney Show. And tomorrow they'll have a full rundown of today's highlights and they'll talk about next week's road trip to Lawrence, Kansas. That's the Bill McCartney Show Sunday nights at 10.35 on News 4. Your home for the CU Buffs. 3.28 to go, third quarter. Salam with a huge hole. He's across midfield, down to the 30, the 20. And finally knocked out of bounds by Jeroy Johnson at the Oklahoma State 18-yard line. But two things, nice cutback here into a gaping hole. Soft spot, play designed to go right and watch Rashawn with excellent vision. Of course, you couldn't help but see that one. And then watch the speed. He outruns Trent Fisher, who has the angle right there. I mean, that is picking him up. And Rashawn Salam with his biggest run of the day. 49 yards on that one. And that gets him back on schedule for his average of almost 174 yards a game. First down for the Buffs. Salam again. Oh, puts his head down and sends the defender Johnny Jones reeling back, but there's a flag on the field. Boy, he is deceptively strong, isn't he? I, I just know he's strong. I mean, I, I think you look at him and say he's a lot. I think he's deceptively fast. That time Johnny Johnny Jones found out that if you're going to hit him, you better get down below the knee. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot on the foul, repeat first down. Offensive lineman not very happy about that call because it's coming back. A nice pickup by Salam is negated by the penalty. And it'll come back to the Oklahoma State 28 and a half yard line. Take a look inside. The offensive line, but tough to see as to where the hole came from. It may have been right there, Brian Stoltenberg. First and 20 for the bus. This is Troutman, his first carry on the day. He might have picked up a yard. Troutman, the freshman out of Naples, Florida, came into the game with 167 yards rushing for the Buffs and five touchdowns. Three of those five came against Texas. He got back to the line of scrimmage that last play, so it's second and 21. It's and a great rush put on Stewart. They're going to call this a fumble? No, they say he was throwing the ball when it dropped out of his arms, so it's an incomplete pass. Eric Hobbs was in his face as he was throwing. I tell you what, I, I, I didn't see a call made until after the ball had been picked up. Oklahoma State doing a little bit what of Nebraska did and putting a lot of pressure inside on Cordell Stewart. I don't know that that arm was moving forward. I, I think Pat Jones may get a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty here. That's exactly what happened. It, it was actually thrown on an assistant coach who came out onto the field to argue with the official. And boy, that's a killer because now instead of third and about 21 at the very least, you're going to move him down well into field goal range. That's the assistant coach. From the back, it looks like the offensive coordinator, Mike Gundy. Boy, was he hot. And it, and, and it cost him. On the defense, third down. And now Pat Jones better watch out or he's going to get thrown a flag also. 
Again, judging from the first replay, and, and actually uh, during the game, I, I didn't think Cordell Stewart's arm was was moving forward. His arm has got to be moving forward for it not to be a fumble. So this ball is placed at the Oklahoma State 14. We've got a minute 57 to go, third quarter. The Buffs leading at 14 to 3. On the option, Salam. Squeezes a couple yards out of it, down to the 12. Eric Hobbs the tackle. All right, let's go down to the field right now. Mark McIntosh. Mark? Yeah, and I think what the Oklahoma State coaches were also complaining about, they're saying, okay, if it wasn't a fumble and it was a pass, it should have been intentional grounding. I think that's what Mike Gundy was going nuts about. And that's why he got the penalty. Back up to you guys. The Buffs with a field goal attempt here. Voskaricci in from 29 yards. And that kick is good. So the Buffs put three more on the board, and the lead has increased to 17-3. to three. With a minute 16 to go, third quarter. I'll tell you this, if, if that's what the Oklahoma State sideline was up in arms about, then I think they probably deserve the flag. Cordell Stewart was hit as he threw the ball, so I don't know how in the world it could be intentional grounding. I, I think clearly, though, that they've got a case about that being a fumble and not, as you see, Pat Jones, and not being an incomplete pass. I agree with you 100%. That was not intentional grounding. He was hit as he was throwing the ball. See, I, I think what he is most upset about, there was not an immediate clear-cut call from the referee until the Cowboys picked up the ball and then Terry Turlington made the uh, the motion of, well, he was throwing the ball. Hey, when, you're, when, you're, when you're struggling for your first conference win, I mean, you know, you're going to yeah. be upset. Everything is a big, big deal. A season full of frustrations. You bet Jones taking it out on the officials right now. So the Buffs getting ready to kick off with a 17-3 lead. A lot tighter than anybody here expected. Take that shit back A low kick. This is Richardson from one yard deep. Ooh, and he is hit quick and hard at his own 19-yard line. Looks like Jeff Nabholz made the tackle. Why most everybody's still in the house here, a close game. We're heading to the end of the third quarter. This is Richardson. Tries the middle, gets nowhere. Maybe even lost a yard or two. Darius Holland was right there. Yeah, it looks like Oklahoma State has changed their blocking scheme a little bit. They're sending the fullback away from the tailback when they had such great success just running the isolation play. Utah leading New Mexico 14 nothing. <laughs> I think Steve Spurrier has it going once again with the Gators. Florida State a big one. Oklahoma State facing second and ten. A lot of time for Jones over the middle to Denson. He's quick, and he gets outside into Buffs territory. Finally pushed out of bounds by Dalton Simmons at the CU 39. And I tell you, they had him double covered. I mean, he is the one guy you must take away from this team. He had 28 catches coming in. But he runs a, a, a bend in, and both you can see both players are left to the outside. Raphael Denson can run. 42 yards on that catch. You can see right there, double coverage with Liam Meaty and Dalton Simmons, and neither guy plays the in route. Why, nobody anywhere near him. Now Oklahoma State trying to get back into this ball game in CU territory for the first down. Hey, 
There's a flag down. That's the first carry on the day for Daryl Boogie Johnson. He gets it inside the 35. This one probably won't come back, but there's the isolation with the fullback lead. You're going to pick up four or five yards. Same face mask maybe against Colorado. You're absolutely right, Mr. Logan. And Oklahoma State. Personal foul. We'll get another 15 yards tacked on. First down. And all of a sudden, in two quick plays, Oklahoma State is down to the CU 20. Bill McCartney asking the official, why 15? Why not a five-yard penalty? That must have been ruled an intentional act. Whistles blow the play dead. Boy, Shannon Clavell took a hit. And he is down on the turf right now at about the 18-yard line. A little woozy. Finally up on his feet. We're going to take a break. Shannon Clavell could probably use one. But see you leading at the end of three, 17-3. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over 2 million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. Why would the Rocky Mountain News call Amendment 11 lousy public policy? They read between the lines of deliberately vague language allowing unscrupulous lawyers to make millions suing businesses without helping injured workers. Vague enough that herbalists, psychic healers, and outright fakes can rip off the system and all locked into our Constitution. 11 risks new opportunities for fraud, says the Denver Post. Newspapers statewide agree. No on 11. I love this new Ankmar garage door because it's tough. I love our new Ankmar door because it's beautiful and the LiftMaster automatic door opener makes it easy to open and close. I like our Ankmar door because it doesn't bruise easily. We need a door that can roll with the punches. I like Ankmar because they've been building garage doors since 1956. Their lifetime guarantee means something and the insulation helps keep our heating bill down. Whatever your reason for the best in garage doors and LiftMaster openers, call Ankmar door 321-2361. CU Bob's Football on News 4 is brought to you by Miller Genuine Draft, by Ride Arrangers, by Kaiser Permanente, by United Airlines, by Blackjack Pizza, and by Samsonite. Well, Mike Gundy, the Oklahoma State offensive coordinator, has the headsets back on, and he's calmed down a bit. But his Oklahoma State Cowboys still trailing CU 17-3. Oklahoma State, however, threatening right now down to the Buffs 20-yard line. It's first and 10. This is Boogie Johnson again. And he boogies for about two yards. There he is howling the stop, along with Ted Johnson. Boogie Johnson is a sophomore redshirt out of Wheeling, West Virginia. All of their key players on offense outside of Raphael Denson are either freshmen or sophomores. So they're going to have a pretty good offense in the uh, couple of years to come. That's Boogie again, stopped by Greg Jones. And that'll bring up third and long. Well, something was wrong with this play. It looked like the counter train, left guard, left tackle pulling, and... Boogie Johnson ran away from the line. I mean, you, you hear a misdirection, but I don't know that that play was designed to go to the left. Brings up third and six. Yeah. 
The quick slant in is caught and first down yardage, but there's a penalty flag down. The reception made by Russell Berrien. I tell you, that was a great catch. That ball was thrown with tremendous velocity, and the coverage was pretty good. May have, in fact, been a little too good. The penalty against CU, and I thought the official gave the signal that the uh, penalty was declined, which it should have been because Oklahoma State did pick up a first down on that play. Take a look at this catch. The quick slant. Simmons allows Berrien to slip inside, but look at this. And again, the placement of the football. It's hard not to catch when it hits you right in the chest. You don't have to extend those arms, and you don't have to catch it in your hands. You can cradle it in your chest. So first and goal for Oklahoma State at the six. We're just starting the fourth quarter. This is Cookie Johnson. Inside the five, down to the four. Ted Johnson the stop. Ted Johnson the tackle. Ted Johnson, the Buffs' leading tackler. He's averaging almost 13 a game and a semifinalist for the Dick Butkus Award, going yeah. to the top linebacker in the nation. This is the counter train. Johnson will come underneath and defeats the block of Calvin Menifee right there, 71. And Ted Johnson able to get underneath those two big pulling linemen to stop that play. Second and goal from the four. Johnson again tries the middle. This time a yard, pushing the pack, maybe squeezed another yard out of it. But I tell you what, I, I'd be very surprised if you get anything other than I formation ISO right here, isolation. You block down with the guard, you lead that fullback up on the linebacker, and you run that tailback right behind him. It's third and goal from the two. It is. David Thompson. I don't think he made it. Down inside the one yard line. Matt Russell, one of the first to hit him. Donnelly Amidi comes limping off the field for the Buffs. And now it's fourth. And less than a yard to go to Pater. And there's no question what Oklahoma State has to do here. They're going for it. Same play. They're down 17 to 3. With 11 and a half to go in the game. Jeff Grenier, the former CSU Ram, is the fullback, the blocking back. It goes to Thompson. He does not make it. Again, we talked about the importance of the jump line being pushed back so that running back can get in the air. You'll see Thompson, before he can gather himself and really get airborne, Greg Jones is there and also a couple of players from the interior part of the defense. The deep handoff, you'll see Thompson is hit in the air right there. Greg Jones, the first to get to him. Matt Russell also, number 16, able to get a hand on it. Jones collapses from the outside. Russell there and the Buffs with a goal line stand. Yeah, they take over on downs at their own one yard line and a 17 to three lead. Cordell gives himself a little breathing room with the quarterback sneak. He's up to the three yard line. Buffs came in, prohibitive favorites, but Oklahoma State giving them a battle. Pick up of three on that last sneak by Cordell. That makes it seven and seven now. Second and seven. Salam. A couple yards short of the first down, Lewis Adams the tackle. Well, Nebraska putting the hurt on Kansas. They're in the fourth quarter, 45 to 10 Huskers. Kansas State shutting out Iowa State at the half. They 
there's a battle between a couple of first place teams in the Pac-10, Washington State leading USC in the second. There are four teams tied for the lead in the Pac-10 conference. Third and three on the option. Court, Cordell pitches to Salam, and he is short of the first down. That'll bring up fourth, and CU has no choice. It'll have to punt. So the Buffs make the nice goal line stand, but can't carry that momentum over to the offensive side of the ball. Andy Mitchell having a fine afternoon, averaging 41 yards a punt. A couple of those inside the 20-yard line. Andre Richardson to return. low end over end Richardson from his own 49 Ted Johnson is there to put the stop on Richardson at midfield we'll take a break with 903 to go in fourth quarter Pure refreshment written all over it. Cold filtered Miller Genuine Draft and MGD Light. Why so many people are getting out of the old and into the cold. Hi, I'm Mike Naughton with great news for truck buyers. My introductory sale of 1995 F 150s was a sellout. So I bought another 60 of them to sell for just $15,977. They're all four-wheel drives with air conditioning, anti-lock brakes, airbags, and overdrive transmission. Brand new 95 F-150 4x4s. While they last, just $15,977. In Aurora, or call 1-800-BIG-MIKE. the air. Share a ride. See you with the lead. 17 to 3. We're in the final quarter of play at Folsom Field. Buffs trying to raise that conference mark to 4 and 1. 8 and 1 overall. Oklahoma State with the ball still trying to gather its first conference win of the year. And the Cowboys have the ball at the CU 48. A good rush put on Tony Jones. Shannon Clavell in his face, and Jones get rid of, gets rid of the ball. The fans want intentional grounding. Well, I, I can't blame him, nor can I blame Bill McCartney for being halfway out in the field. I mean, who did he throw that ball to? This is not the National Football League in which you break contain and you can throw it away. I mean, you must have a receiver in the nearby vicinity, and you can see Jones running for his life you don't see where the ball goes, but it's about uh, six deep into the CU bench. And that is not a happy man. Threw the ball out of bounds. <laughs> yes, he did, Coach. Bill McCartney playing hurt today with a broken wrist. Jones looking downfield, almost intercepted by Greg Jones. They tried to get the ball to Raphael Denson and didn't have anybody to hold Greg Jones, the linebacker. He just kind of was able to sink back into that outcut lane. Well, Air Force holds on to beat Army 10 to 6 and wins the Commander in Chief's Trophy, which means the Air Force seniors get to go to the White House and visit with President Clinton. That's nice to see Air Force with its sixth win in a row. Third and ten for Oklahoma State. Jones takes off. Cut from behind by Shannon Clavell. 
the junior out of New Orleans, Clavel, having quite a day today. And that, that play really, Clavel gets the sack, but the play made by Donnell Liamidi, you can see Jones looking right. He's trying to get the ball to Rafael Denson. And Donnell Liamidi intercepts that in route. No place for Tony Jones to throw the ball. Greg Ivey to punt, Chris Hudson to receive. Fair catch called for. Hudson at his own 11. And as the Buffs offense comes out onto the field, we'll take a break. We'll see you leading at 17. -0. say there's the Big Dipper and United Airlines. You see the moon and United. Every time you look up, there's United. With over 700 flights in and out, more than all other airlines combined. More United flights than stars? Some nights, yes. United. We'll move mountains for you. Come fly our friendly skies. Babies have always fascinated me. Maybe more than most kids, I couldn't get over the whole concept of it. So after medical school, I specialized in obstetrics. And since then, I delivered many, many babies. But for me, every time, every baby is still very special. As a member of Kaiser Permanente, you can have a personal physician. One like Dr. Ruth Petrucia. Kaiser Permanente. Good people, good medicine. Uh, Cordell Stewart talking to his teammates in the huddle. He has become the first player in Big A Conference history to pass for more than 6,000 yards and rush for over 1,000 yards. Been a great player here and received a nice ovation from the crowd at Folsom Field. Buffs with the ball at their own 11-yard line. This is Salam. He gets it across the 15 up to the 17 before Trent Fisher makes the tackle. Go down to the field now and Mark McIntosh. Mark? Thank you very much, Les. Uh, a note on Rashawn Salam. He's been sick all day. When he comes off the field, he's been dizzy and nauseous, but he refuses to come out of there. This guy wants to play, wants to stay in the Heisman race. He's sick, not feeling well, but still having a great ball game. Back up to you guys. Certainly is. He's over 100 yards once again. Second and five for CU. Salam. Very close to first down yardage. Link Harden made the tackle. Clock ticking. We've got seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And an exact figure on Rashawn Salam for the day, 140 yards rushing. Third and one for the Buffs. Salam again has the first down. And up to his own 26. holding on to a 17 to 3 lead. Salam takes out 3 yards, Bailey the tackle. Well, when this conference becomes the Big 12, 
of the year 1996, Oklahoma State and CU will be in separate divisions. Bill McCartney's buffs will be in the north. Oklahoma State will be in the south. And they won't face each other every year. They'll only run into each other every two or three years. And the way Oklahoma State is playing today, CU is glad of that open. This is Salam with a big hole up the middle. Finally dragged down at his own 45. A gain of 16. Johnny Jones the tackle. You, know, you talk about the offensive line, and they really have done a great job this year, but this man wears you down physically. That's a huge hole, but he just runs through tackles. And you get tired of having to come up and hit somebody that is that big and strong. 28 carries, 164 yards. And I think Rashawn Salam is the kind of back that really gets better as the game progresses. First and 10 for the Buffs. Salam again. Another three yards. Jake Grossfield the tackle. I'll tell you what, these linemen are in shape because that's about the fourth or fifth consecutive play. They've run counter tray, which requires two of them to pull and lead up inside the formation. Take up a three on the play. Second and seven ball three. Not many people have left the stadium. The perception is Oklahoma State is still in this ball game with 4.35 to go in the final quarter. Second and seven for CU. The pitch to Troutman. And he is upended by Jeroy Johnson. Johnson is a quick little guy. He's been all over the field making tackles today. But well, you can tell watching this game that the Cowboys have spent a lot of extra time working on the option because as soon as they start this option, the cornerback comes just like that. Nice tackle by Jeroy Johnson. And the Cowboys, for the most part, have played the CU option effectively. Third and eight. Cordell, the out pattern to Fourier, but he's short of the first down, about three yards short. That'll bring up fourth, and that'll bring out the punting team. So neither offense able to do a whole lot here in the second half. All we've had put on the board was three points, a field goal by CU. Andre Richardson will receive the punt from Andy Mitchell. Andy gets off a good one, but a little too deep. So Oklahoma State will start the ball at its own 80-yard line after a 50-yard kick by Mitchell. Genuine draft for us to want a stock car. See it. Hear it. Feel it. Catch it. If you can. The new Chevy Blazer gives you this elegant interior, exceptional quiet, and three power ports to plug in electronic equipment. This is Lynn. Leave a message at the tone, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Isn't it nice to know all that's there, even if you're not? A bit of a haze settling over the flat irons late this afternoon. 
Nothing, of course, compared to the fog we experienced in the metro area yesterday. Make for some nice pictures. Oklahoma State with the ball, first and 10 from its own 20. This is Andre Richardson. He's dangerous in the open field. The ball pops loose, but it, the play is whistled dead. There's also a flag on the field. Three twenty-seven to go, final quarter. Well, Dave, they're the seventh-ranked team in the nation. Ten yards, spot of the foul. Take a look right side of your screen. See if we can see the illegal use of hands as the screen is about to be set up. Right there, in the middle of the back. Back to that thought. Seventh-ranked team in the nation. They're beating unranked Oklahoma State by just two touchdowns. Do you think this hurts to see you in the polls? I, I really don't know. I, I, I don't know that they'll necessarily move up even if somebody loses, but I, I certainly don't think they'll move down. Uh-uh. That pass was intended for Berrien. Dalton Simmons had a better beat on it than Berrien did, however. See, again, they're trying to get to the post corner, but they're not sending any receiver out in the flat to hold that corner. So in, in two deep zone, the cornerback has nobody in his area and sinks back into your route. Dalton Simmons made a nice play that time. Nebraska has another one wrapped up against Kansas. Syracuse, a potential foe for CU in the postseason bowl picture with a small lead also. A nice cutback by Richardson. He is about a well, a couple yards short of the first down. Steve Rosga, the tackle. Richardson's been a real workhorse this afternoon. As well, he should be with that quickness. A true freshman. Oklahoma State with third and three at their own 27. Jones will keep it and get the first down, and he's across the 35. Rick Jones the stop. So Oklahoma State still has some life. Each team has its full complement of timeouts remaining, three apiece. First down from their own 35, the Cowboys. Oh, in and out of the hands of Mike Phillips. That's the second time today he got both hands on a ball but wasn't able to hold on. Mike Phillips, the freshman redshirt out of Marrero, Louisiana. Quite a few of these kids out of Marrero. Cordell Stewart, Dalton Simmons. Second and ten. Flags fly as Jones takes off with the ball. And he goes down at midfield. That looked like a broken play to you or designed that way? No, I think, I think it was designed to be a pass play. Just nobody else. Illegal procedure. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Repeat second down. So bring it back. David, do these kids realize that it's uh, about 45 degrees out here right now? <laughs> they may realize it, but I don't think they care. You take a look at the conference standings. Nebraska will remain undefeated. About to beat Kansas. And stay undefeated overall also. Second and 15. 
the screen to Thompson. And he's run out at the 41. Four yards short of the first. That'll bring up third and four. Minute and a half to go in the ballgame. And Oklahoma State not exactly playing with a sense of urgency. You'd think they'd be going downfield a bit more. Yeah, I don't. Obviously, with this offense, it's uh, it's not designed to. And, and I don't know that they have great capability to really stretch it. But I think you have to tip your hat to the Cowboys. They came in here and played hard. And when you're looking for your first conference win this late in the season, you don't always get that kind of effort. Staying with it on the ground, that's Joe Jefferson, the fullback. He gets the first down. And he's up to his own 46-yard line. Well, now I don't think you have a choice, David. I, I think you have to throw it downfield, and I think you have to keep your eye on Raphael Denson. The Buffs, of course, in double coverage on him. He's their best deep threat. Jones brought down from behind by Shannon Clavel, who's holding his side in pain. Well, I'll tell you, Shannon has left it all on the field today. He's played a whale of a ball game. And, and this, you were talking about the reasons that they don't throw the ball down the field, one of which is pass protection. Tony Jones goes back, a little play action, fake holds no one. Shannon Clavell escapes inside and forces Jones to step up in the pocket and ultimately makes the sack. I don't know how he got hurt here. It may have, this may be a reaction a little bit more on, on an earlier injury. Yeah, like, 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 like he got a hit pointer a little bit earlier in the game. And Shannon will be helped off the field. Boy, they have gotten banged up today. Joined us late, Kerry Hicks, the starting nose tackle, came out with a sprained knee. He's limping around on crutches right now. Ray Carruth, starting wide receiver, came out of the game with a quadricep injury. Michael Westbrook didn't even play today because of a foot sprain and infection. And now Clavel comes limping off. One oh five to go. Ups ahead of Oklahoma State, 17 to three. The Cowboys with the ball at their own 42. It's second and 14. That's Boogie Johnson. He's across midfield, but well short of the first down. Matt Russell made the tackle. Oklahoma State has two timeouts left. I don't think it's going to matter, though. Under 45 seconds to go. That pass far overthrown. The intended receiver was Tim McNeil. But it serves a purpose for the Cowboys. It stops the clock at 33 seconds. Quite a record when holding the opponents to 17 points or less. They'll add to the win column in that one. Fourth and three, Oklahoma State going for it. Jones looking for Denson. And Denson comes back to get it at the CU 30-yard line. 25 seconds left in the game. First down, Oklahoma State. Nice ad lib by Jones and Denson on that one. And right back to the line of scrimmage. The quick slant to Denson. Yeah, this time <laughs> the black jerseys surround him. They've seen that play before. Ryan Olson makes the tackle. Hey, Ra Raphael Denson's had a heck of a game. Denson now with seven catches. 
Well, we'll all be back with you next Saturday, November 12th, as the Buffs travel to Lawrence, Kansas, and take on the Jayhawks. We'll have all the action from Memorial Stadium starting at noon. That's this coming Saturday, November 12th. It's the same news for crew as always, but this game will air on KTVD Channel 20. The Buffs and Jayhawks next Saturday at noon on KTVD Channel 20. Well, now, uh, what do we do? We head to the airport, take off uh, for L.A., yeah, cover a Broncos right. game tomorrow. I guess that's right. And we hope the traffic isn't too bad getting out of here. I don't think it will be. Quite a few people have cleared out already. This game well in hand, 14 seconds to go. Buffs lead it 17 to 3. Speaking of a need game, Broncos sure need that one tomorrow, don't they? Well, they do. Any hopes of getting back into a playoff race? Hinge on the next couple of weeks. There's no room for another loss for the Broncos. Second and three for Oklahoma State. Going to the end zone. Looking for Denson. A far overthrow. Almost landed right on top of Ralphie. I guess Ralphie's gone by now, but Ralphie's corral, I should say. You know, Ralphie leaves games early. I've noticed that the last couple of years. Much like some of the fans. Yeah, they get her out of here early. When you're 1,700 pounds, you can decide when you've had enough, and that's that. Where do you go? And so we go. And where does Ralphie sit? Anywhere she, she wants to. That's right. right. <laughs> Third and three. Jones brought down. I don't believe it's a sack because he was past the line. I believe he was past the line of scrimmage. Daryl Price made the tackle. Oklahoma State takes a timeout. With two seconds to go. Oklahoma State going to take one more stab at getting into the end zone. Bill McCartney conferring with quarterbacks coach Rick Neuheisel. Neuheisel mentioned recently as a possible candidate for any opening that might happen at Michigan State where George Perlis is in trouble. Also this week we learned uh, Bob Simmons, an assistant coach for CU, is thinking about applying for the vacancy at Ohio University. A lot of McCartney's coaches have gone on to head coaching jobs. Fourth down for Oklahoma State. You know where this one's going. Into the end zone. There are two seconds left in this game. He puts it up. And that might have been intercepted. It was intercepted. And that's the end of the ball game. What a way to end it. Chris Hudson, we believe with the interception to finish off this ball game. The Buffs over Oklahoma State, 17 to three. CU's record now eight and one overall, four and one in conference. Oklahoma State drops to three, five and one overall, and still winless in the big eight with an 0 four and one record. Let's go down to Mark McIntosh right now. He's got one of the buffs standing by. Thank you very much. We're here with uh, Christian Fourier. He's got a sore throat. Might not be able to hear him very well, but I think 17 to 3, you guys were looking for a little more than that today. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't play very good. Uh, it was a real hard game to get up for. You know, and uh, the crowd wasn't very, it wasn't into it either. So, you know, we're happy with it. You know, win's a win. But uh, we could have played a lot better. You know, you had... Uh, one time he got down the one-yard line, or actually down around the 10-yard line, didn't get it on fourth and one, and then Savoy had the fumble there. It could have easily been, uh, you know, another 14 points. Could have been 31-3. He looked a little more impressive. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of mistakes. Uh, Bill, you know, that was hard for him. And, uh, and then we had another time we had a reverse where we fumbled the ball, and, and there was clear sailing for that one. So, uh, you know, it was just hard for us. <laughs> it really was. 
It's going to be difficult really probably the rest of the regular season picking it up after that Nebraska loss, won't it? No, not with what we see here, we can't do that because we got to play Kansas, and they're pretty good. And if we go into Kansas like this, we'll, we'll get our butts kicked. And, uh, you know, we, we got a lot of work to do. We can't, we can't play like this. Thank you, Christian. Christian Fourier, senior tight end and co-captain of the Buffs, uh, obviously disappointed in the team's effort today. They're going to have to pick it up. they got to go on the road next week and play the Kansas Jayhawks in Lawrence, a place the Buffs have struggled the last few times they've gone there to take on the Jayhawks. Back up to you, Les. Thanks, Mark. And a very blunt Christian Fourier. We'll talk a little bit more about his remarks when we come back to wrap it up. Mac and Mac are back. Mac and Mac? Bill McCartney. Mark McIntyre. A couple of Macs. Looking ahead. And looking back. At the CU attack. The quarterback sacks. The high-speed impact. Catch all the smacks and whacks. And stay ahead of the pack. With two mighty Macs. Keeping track of the Golden Black. On the Bill McCartney Show, as a matter of fact. Sunday nights, 1035 on News 4 to be exact. Brought to you by these magnificent companies. Over 700 flights coming and going every business day, fanning out nonstop to nearly a hundred cities. Covering the sky with more flights from Denver than all other airlines combined. A kaleidoscopic array that could only be brought to you by United and United Express. We'll move mountains for you. Come fly our friendly skies. Dough made fresh daily and aged to perfection. Great tasting homemade sauce. The freshest ingredients. And a simple philosophy. Better pizza at a better price. Hungry yet? You should be. Call your nearest Blackjack Pizza location now and we'll deliver an unbeatable hot pizza right to your door. No gimmicks, just great pizza. Blackjack Pizza. $2.59 a month. Hard proof. But during Ford Truck Month, your Ford dealer is determined to give you the lowest lease rate available on the best-selling truck in the world. Ford F-150. Just $2.59 a month for a loaded 95 F-150 4x4. Plus, you'll get air conditioning, split bench seating, and a V8 engine at no extra charge. You'll find the best value around during Ford Truck Month. And with a $2.59 lease rate on a loaded F-150 4x4, your Ford dealer's got the hard proof to back it up. Well, we'll wrap it up here from Folsom Field. One last question for you, David. Christian Fourier just said, hey, we just weren't up for this game. We were flat. Well, that's two games in a row. They weren't really up for that. They were flat. If you're Bill McCartney, what are you going to tell your kids right now? Well, I, I don't know that I would characterize their effort in Nebraska as flat. I just think they, they, they got beat and, and did not play very well. And Nebraska played extremely well. And we knew they'd come in here today flat after what happened last week. I just think if Bill McCartney, you say, fellows, it's a win. We've got to get better and you've got to get them more emotionally involved next week as they go to Kansas. I admire Christian for being honest, saying, hey, if we go play next week in Lawrence, as we play here today, we'll get our butt kicked. All right, Dave and I are off to L.A. to cover the Broncos game against the Rams. He'll be doing that game on KOA Radio, and I'll be in the locker room afterwards on Channel 4 News at 5 o'clock. The final score from here at Folsom Field is CU 17, the Oklahoma State Cowboys 3. The executive producer of today's game is Tom Edwards. Today's game is produced by Terry Trevato and directed by Tom Richards. Our chief engineer is John Bates, and today's engineer in charge, Doug Houston. My thanks to Eric Danner, my spotter, and Ray Friedman, the stat man. Dave, Mark, and I will be back next Saturday, November 12th, when the Buffs take on the Kansas Jayhawks live from Lawrence. And don't forget, this one is on KTVD Channel 20. For Dave Logan and Mark McIntosh, I'm Les Shapiro saying so long from Folsom Field in Boulder. This has been a presentation of News 4 Sports, the home of the CU Buffaloes.